All right. Hello, Chain Breakers. All right. I have an impromptu live. Okay. We just got off of the launch party for the ebook and something was stirring in my spirit. Okay. Um, I hope that y'all are doing all right. I don't know. I'm not going to be on here long um, at all, um, but I just had to release this because I felt like it was somebody on the call who needed to hear a word. I don't know who is going to hear it. I don't know um, how they will hear it, but when God gives me something, I have to release it or it will, it will, it'll keep stirring in my spirit. Okay. I have to release it when he tells me to. Hello. I see a lot. It's good to see you. Praise the most high. Hello, Naisha Brooks. Hello, Carmen. How are y'all doing? Thank y'all so much for joining this impromptu live. Um, as I said, we just got off the launch party and I just, this message was stirring in my spirit and I felt like it was somebody there that needed either, hey, nay, that needed um, deliverance or or something, you know? Hello, crazy Kenna. It's good to see y'all. Um, I felt like somebody in that space needed um, a word from God. And this is what was stirring in my spirit. So we had the launch party for the for the book. Thank you to those chain breakers, to your queens who showed up to that. I just posted it um, in my story. I almost forgot about it. I mean, in my um, community tab. Um, but God was telling me the narcissist is going down. Don't get caught up. Don't get caught on the ship. All right. And this this is like, ooh, this is heavy in my spirit. Shalom, Lisa. This is heavy in my spirit. And he brought me to the to Revelations 2 and 22. And it says, behold, I will hold, I will throw her onto a sick bed. And those who commit adultery with her, I will throw into great tribulation unless they repent of her works. Okay. So the narcissist's life is judgment. All right. Their, their life is full of judgment. Blessings, finesse. Their life is full of judgment, all right? And if we keep enabling and if we keep staying uh, in agreement with them, then we're going to be part of that tribulation. So God is getting ready to judge some things and some situations, and he's trying to get his people to come out of, come out from amongst Jezebel. Love you too, Linda. God bless you, all right? Amen, Alex. Uh, Alex, God bless you. It's good to see you. All right. So the narcissist hides their judgment. They hide their come up. And so people think that the narcissist is getting away with everything. So God is allowing those thorns to some of you to hurt you. He's He doesn't want that. All right. But he's allowing those situations to hurt you so that you come out from amongst the narcissist. OK, so God is saying, get out of the way or you're going to receive their judgment, too. So God God is giving you warning. All right. And I feel this in my spirit. He's talking to someone who is like, well, I don't have money. I don't have this and I don't have that. And God is saying, do you trust me? Do you trust me to be Jehovah Jireh? Do you trust me? All right. Because you don't, you don't know what the hand of God, what his judgment really is when it comes that he's going to come down. He's going to judge these narcissists. And I know a lot of people think that they get away um, with what they do. They do not. And, and something is getting ready to happen in some, I don't know, and we prophesy in part, right? So I don't know if uh, who this word is for, but I feel this in my spirit. So somebody is saying, well, I'll wait until this, I'll wait until the kids get out. I'll wait until the kids get older. I'll wait, the kids, the kids, uh, you know, I don't have money. And God is saying, I'm going to provide for you if you get out of covenant because you're in covenant with Jezebel. Little do you know, and he's saying, I'm going to change your life, but I need you to trust me. Okay. That's right. If we agree with them, we also get the punishment of their sin and pe right. And that's so true that that's so true. We do. Right. So we got to come out from amongst them. All right. You got to come out from amongst them. All right. So I don't know who that word is for, but it is a strong word. I feel it in my spirit. All right. Um, and, and you know, that narcissist is, is, is going to bring you to financial ruin. They're um, And I'm not saying this to instill fear. All right. That's not what this is about. I just want you to be warned. Okay. Um, I just want you to be warned. This is a message of love. All right. This is a message of warning. All right. This is a message of rebuke. And it's just a short one. Okay. Um, unless y'all have any questions or anything like that. And I'm telling you as somebody who had to, who had to get out of this situation, who had to make some tough choices, it's not easy, especially when you are in a demonic soul tie um, and trauma bond with them. So you're not talking to somebody who, you know, who, who's not talking about what I've been through. I've gone through this and I know how hard it is to leave. 
Okay. And I can imagine now, now I had my own. So it's some of you who don't have your own. Okay. And that does make it harder, but we serve a God who is able to do exceedingly more than you can ever imagine or ask for. So he's asking you, do you trust him? I don't care if you have a little or you have a lot, you still have to have faith the seed, the size of a mustard seed to leave a narcissist. People think it's easier because you have financial means. It makes it easier a little bit financially, but the trauma bond spiritually, we still all have to go through deliverance. We still all have to go through things. All right. So whether you have a little or whether you have a lot, whatever your situation is, God wants to be your provider. It doesn't matter about your education. It doesn't matter about your lack of education. It, none of that matters. God wants you, wants to be your resource. He wants to be your provider. That's right. It's, it's so much better on God's side, Samantha. It's so much better, right, Finesse? Hallelujah. Don't wait. Get away. God takes care of his own. And that's the that's the message, okay? So so sometimes, uh, as we saw with like, um, who was that? Denea Jackson. She was like, you know, saying the weapon formed against me won't prosper. The weapon formed against me and my husband won't prosper. No, sometimes you are married. You are so tied to the, to the very demons, to the very thing that is not married making you prosper. So God wants to prosper your hands. He wants to prosper you. He has plans to bring you to, to, to you know, he, he knows the plans that he has for you, but those plans will not be fulfilled as long as you are tied to a demonic clown. As long as you are tied to Jezebel, it's not going to work. All right. And I know we talked about this even uh, today. A lot of you have been told to stay and pray. And this is what people are doing. People are getting unbelievers confused with the narcissist. Narcissist. A narcissist is not an unbeliever. You know, it, the, and even though the Bible says if an unbeliever wants to depart, let them part, depart. But a narcissist is not just an unbeliever. A narcissist is someone who is filled with demonic spirits. They are demonized. Do you hear me? We're not just talking about an unbeliever. And some of you are saying, well, I'll cover this unbeliever. This is your confusing scripture. And I need you to understand what thus says the Lord. All right. A narcissist is different from an unbeliever. All right. And some of you are trying to uh, 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 some of you are trying to apply biblical princes uh, uh, principles. Some of you are trying to apply biblical prince principles to something that is demonic in nature. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't matter how much you stay and pray. Can God do anything? Yes, God can do absolutely anything but fail. But what he is not going to do, he is not going to impede on anybody's will. So if that narcissist wants to stay being a narcissist, being filled with the Jezebel spirit, and they don't want to submit because they've turned, you know, they've turned themselves over to Leviathan, then God's hand, like, what, what do you want him to do? So either that Jezebel, you got one of, you got a few choices here. Either that narcissist is going to submit, which narcissist narcissists don't do. They don't submit to anything but Jezebel. They don't submit to anything but trouble. They don't submit to anything but demonic spirits. Do you hear me? Or you're going to have to submit to Jezebel, which you already are in agreement with. You're going to submit to Jezebel or either you're going to get out of that demonic covenant because God didn't put you in that thing, but he'll bring you out of that thing. Do you understand me? I come as a witness. So you have to be able to understand why God says he hates divorce. He wasn't talking. He was talking to the men. Do you understand me? because they were putting their way, all right? They were they were putting their way. They were shellacking their women. They were putting them away for any old reason, all right? So I know people have said God hates divorce. And yes, that is, that is in the Bible. But why did he say that? Who was he talking to? What is the exegesis of that scripture? Why did God say that? All right. That he said that because his sons were putting their wives away for any old reason. And God also, God also divorced Israel and he'll divorce you too. All right. If you, if, if you're on the road to reprobation, which narcissists are, narcissists are on their way to reprobation. A lot of them, a lot of them have been turned over because God has given them warning and they heeded none of the warnings. And God is saying, if you don't get out daughter, if you don't get out son, you're 
gonna you're gonna feel the tribulation of the narcissist and it's not gonna be pretty some of us have left with nothing some of us have left with whatever all right hello fam is good to, right 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 <laughs> all right so it doesn't matter about the things all right it's about what God, God can restore you. All right. And then somebody is prideful. Hey, Nandy D, God bless you. All right. Some, some people are, are, um, they just don't know. They're, they're losing their mind behind this narcissist. Some people have lost, literally lost their brain cells. All right. Because they've been gaslit and in trauma for so long. No, no, because the narcissist, your brain, your sanity is the price you pay for that demonic covenant. So God is saying it's time to come out. It is time to exit it. It's time to ex exit us. It's time to exit, all right, demonic covenants, period. That's churches. That's that's any of this, all right? That That is, you know, fraternities, sororities. That is all of that stuff, all right? And I know I look crazy, all right, especially the people on my timeline, especially on Facebook, because half of them are on sorority in sororities and fraternities so i know this can be a hard word and people like oh you don't know what you're talking about i don't serve that i don't serve that you do you do you do it's the same thing that a trauma bonded person says oh i don't serve that narcissist but you're in covenant you're in covenant this is about covenants and altars you're in covenant with false gods you're in covenant with false gods and God is bring is trying to bring his people out of idolatry. All right. God says, have no other gods before me. And I know you do it for community service. I know you do it for all these other reasons. You do it because, you know, you love this person, but this person can't love you. A false God can't love you. They can't do anything for you. Did you not see how how in the Bible with Elijah, with the 450 prophets of Baal, or the was it 400 prophets of Baal, or 450 prophets of Baal, and then the 450 prophets of Ashura? Their gods did nothing. Their gods did nothing. The narcissist is not going to do anything for you. The narcissist is going to leave you high and dry. All right. So I don't care how many children you work, your plan, you work, you plan your work, but most of all, go to the most high God. He will make a way of escape. All right. It's all about your mindset. If you don't think that you can't make it out of this, you won't. All right. And you'll stay in that demonic covenant and you'll go down with the narcissist. Do you understand that? Do you understand what this means to your life, to your destiny, to your future? This is not just about you. You can't be selfish in this. And you can't think that, oh, well, the kids, the kids need a two-parent home. No, that's a healthy parent. That's healthy parents. All right. If you have a narcissist as a parent or a co-parent, they're counter-parenting -parent every move. They're playing chess and you're playing checkers, all right? So this is about generational curses. You're putting your children under curses. Don't you want to leave your children with a legacy? Don't you want to leave your children with hope? Don't you want to leave your children with future? Do you understand me? So when you're in a narcissistic covenant, you're placing them under covenants. You're placing them under demonic covenants, okay? So God wants you to leave Pharaoh behind, all right. Do you understand that? Do you, do you, didn't you see how the plagues came upon the people because they were under Pharaoh? So God doesn't want you to take part of that. All right. He's saying he sent me as a messenger. Let my people go. Let my people go. Let my people go. It's time to let my people go. Do you understand me? God says that he is the God. He, he is he is Lord. He will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. Why do you want to follow Greek? Why do you want to be an Egyptian when you can follow Christ, when you can follow Yeshua? It makes no sense. God says, I will free you from this. I will free you from being slaves to them. I have never been more free since I have been following Yeshua. Do you understand me? All right. It is freedom. God says, I will redeem you with an outstretched hand and a mighty act from, from mighty acts of judgment. God is getting ready to bring judgment upon the narcissist. Do you understand me? Narcissists are reprobate. There is no saving them. I don't know why people, we think that, we think that we are the exception. We think that we can save them, that our love is going to save a narcissist. The love didn't say, the love doesn't save a narcissist. All right. They don't want your love. They hate your love. They hate your love. 
Do you understand that? You're dealing with somebody who is a Luciferian. You're dealing with someone who is a Satanist in the way that they think. It's not a narcissist. A narcissist is a nice term for a Luciferian, for somebody who has the mind of Satan. All right, that's where we get narcissists from, where, where that narcissist uh, from Greek mythology, all right, where narcissists looked in his and in the water and saw his reflection and he fell in love with it. Narcissist is not just somebody who is in love with their reflection. Narcissist is somebody who has the mind of Satan. They think that they can fool God. Narcissists think that they can outsmart, outwit, outplay, and outlast God. That is pure deception. And if you think that you can outwit, outplay, outlast, outwit God, you are mistaken. If you think that God knows your pretty little heart, no, God knows obedience. That's how that's how God identifies you as his own. Do you understand me? He doesn't identify you, all right, by your tears. He doesn't identify you by by your by whatever. He identifies you as a child of his because you follow him. He says, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not answer. Why are you answering Jezebel when she calls? Why are you answering Jezebel when he calls? Do you understand me? All right, when you follow the word of God and it's gonna take you breaking up with your fantasy, it's gonna take you breaking up with your fantasy to heed the word of God. You're going to have to lay down everything that you thought you wanted. And then the, the good part about that is what you thought you wanted really ain't what you want. Because when you take off them narc goggles off your face, you're gonna see that that thing was a devil in a blue dress. You're gonna see what you was really sleeping with. When you, when you awake, you are sleeping with the enemy. And God, God is trying to awaken you. You're going to see and it's going to disgust you that you were sleeping with that thing that is full of curses, that is full of demonic spirits. It is going to literally disgust you that you were laying down next to this entity. Do you understand me? So God is not playing around with them. They are absolutely reprobates and they are here to put the, the extinguish the light of those who follow Yeshua. Narcissists, narcissists want your bloodline. They want your spirit. They are siphoning your spirit. They are taking your youth. They are wasting your time. I'm not going to sugarcoat this thing for you here today. All right. I'm not going to put some nice psychology on it and say, well, 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 you know, no, I'm not going to do that because this is a dire message from somebody. So if, it, if you feel hot, all right, it might be for you. All right. I don't have all the answers, but I know somebody who does. All right, you're looking for a savior and there's only one savior. There's only one Yeshua. There's only one God. Do you understand me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? I am finally strong enough to get away from the narcissistic person I was dealing with, but he keeps on calling me. I am standing strong against him. Block him. Block him. Block him. Block him. Block him again. If you can't block him because you got kids, look, look, give him another number. Block, look, change your number. Do what you have to do because Satan is on the main line. Satan is on that other line. That ain't no narcissist. That's a demon. That's a demon on the other line. Start thinking about this thing spiritually. Start thinking about this thing. He's trying to put narc juice in your veins. They can smell. They can smell when you start getting strong again. And then they'll try to, you know, uh, uh, send a fiery dart. This is a, this is our demons coming back. All right. To see if you're up for another round of abuse. That's all the Hoover is. So continue to be strong. Continue to, to, to uh, read the word of God. Continue to put on your armor and know what this really is. Amen. Thank Thank you, sis. God bless you. Thank you for that. Yes, yeah, show some love. All right. I know my husband is out of town. I just came on here. This message was in my spirit. So I just wanted to release it. All right. I'm not going to be before you long. Hey, it's good to see you. Yes. Greetings from California. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, Arne, God bless you. It's good to see you. Yes, God will restore. He will. God doesn't take anything away. Thank you for seeing it. God doesn't take anything away from you without a plan to restore you. So if he allowed it to be taken, it's because he's going to not only replace it, he's going to replace it with something better. He's going to replace it with something better than you had before. It's just like that picture with that teddy bear. All right. And you're crying out for this little dusty 
nasty, musty, rusty, crusty teddy bear, all right, that don't even do anything for you, all right, that that causes you headache and, and turmoil, that puts you under curses, all right, and then God has God has your kingdom spouse back here, but you can't get your kingdom spouse because you're over here tied up with Jezebel, you over here tied up with Leviathan, Python has got you, look, in a good old demonic, uh, demonic trio, do you understand me, but God is saying, do you trust me? Do you trust me? No, it's not going to be easy. No, because your flesh wants them. Your sin, man, your flesh. So you have to battle yourself. You have to battle your own mind. You have to, your mind has to become fortified with the word of God so that you can battle these demons. You can't do this in your own strength. You can't do this in your own might. Do you understand me? You have to have the word of God. You have to be born again. If you're not born again, you will not be able to endure by the Holy Spirit. And if you can endure a narcissist, if you can endure a narcissist calling your line, how are you going to stand against the Antichrist when they come before you and say that you can't buy or sell? When they say you can't feed your children, how are you going to stand? You're going to be like, you, we want you to be like, we all want to be like the uh, shed drag me checking a bed and he go where we don't bow down to this bell system that's what this is about this ain't about no nary daggone narcissist this is about preparing you to bow down to the beast system and if you can't stand against a little hoover you will not be able to stand against the antichrist this is your training ground the narcissist is just training and if you don't if you don't get past level one you won't be able to endure to the end this is what this is about if if you can't recognize and discern a wolf from a sheep, God, look, if you can't do that, how are you going to stand when the Antichrist comes doing signs and wonders? All right. How are you going to stand? No, you not. You won't bow down because you want your ears tickled. You won't be able to discern that this is a wolf if you cannot stand against a narcissist now. How will you be able to stand when they tell you to bow? How? 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 And you, some of you think it's punishment to be coming, to be pulled out of your family. You're going to be pulled out of your family when you're a chosen one. You're going to be pulled out of your family when you're a chain breaker. You are a peculiar people. You are a royal priesthood. Count it all joy when you, when you suffer for Christ's sake. Count it all joy. This ain't to take you out. This is to bring you in. God is trying to bring you in into the Ark of the Covenant. He's trying to bring you into safety, but you're just like Lot's wife and you keep looking back to Egypt. You keep looking back to the past. He's trying to bring you in to the safety of the ark. There's no safety with the narc. There's no safety with the narcissist. That's out of the will of God. Inside the will of God is safety. Inside the will of God is kingdom. Inside of the will of God is deuteronomous power to be able to stand against the enemy. Inside of the will of God is your purpose. Inside of the will of God is your provision. Inside of the will of God is your purpose. Inside of the will of God is love. It is love love the love that you've been searching for and thinking that a narcissist could give it to you that is inside the will of god with one of his chosen not from a satan it's not from a satan it's a luciferian a demonic clown from narc town that ain't what it is that may be all you know because of conditioning, because of trauma, because of unprocessed trauma, because of sin. That may be all you know, but there's more. There's more to life than suffering, long suffering and abuse. That is not your portion. That is not your portion. I left my entire family of origin. They stole, they even stole my inheritance. I did not care. I'm alive and well. God has another inheritance for you. I declare that the, the, the inheritance of the Lord is coming back to you. You won't even need their inheritance. Everything is being taken back in the realm of the spirit. I declare you will, you will have you won't have that inheritance, but you will have a godly inheritance. You will have the inheritance from the Lord in Jesus' name. It's coming back to you. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No association with witchcraft. None. None. We got to come up out of our cultural gods and ancestral gods and polytheism. We, every race, every culture has their, their version, their flavor of false gods. And if you don't come from out of that, you cannot be with a narcissist and then look through, through abuse and whatever. You went on into witchcraft. God, no, that ain't it either. You went on over to New Age. That ain't it either. Do you understand? me. You went on over to whatever you went over to, your drug of choice, all right? Your witchcraft or, or warlock or wizardry of choice, that's not it either. Don't allow a narcissist because of pain to push you into witchcraft and new age. That's not it either. That's still idolatry. It's still divination, all right? And you won't. You won't. Look, hell awaits you. I'm not sugarcoating for, for you tonight, all right? Hell awaits you. You cannot serve God and be saging. You cannot serve God. Look, why do you, you cannot, don't call yourself, there's no such thing as a Christian witch. Do you understand me? That's what the narcissist is here to do is to push you into witchcraft. Jezebel was a witch. She was a Baal worshiping Phoenician witch. And Ahab had no business making an alliance with her. We had no business making demonic covenants and alliances with Jezebel. All right. That's friendships. That's partnerships. It's whatever. All right. Now is the season to examine it all. Now is the season to examine it all. Do you understand me? If they pledge to it, they will serve their idols. Right. They sure will. And that's sad. That's sad because at the end of the day, you can call yourself a Christian. But if you bowing down, if you made oaths to false gods, you won't make it in. I'm sorry. You won't. I'm going to tell you the truth. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, TJ. I appreciate that. God always makes a way. When have we seen God not make a way? When have we seen that God will restore everything the devil stole? He will give you new life, new family, new memories, new DNA, new everything, new, 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 everything new, everything new. Hello, Vanessa. Yes, the narcissist is going down. This is a prophetic word. Hallelujah. God has spoken this to me also. And he said the claw, it will go and the witch will die and Baal will be cut off. Let my people go, sweet rose. That is it in a nutshell. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that. That's what it is. The ship is about to go down. The ship is about to go down, all right? And, and if, if, if Jezebel is your God, if Baal is your God, it's not gonna be pretty for you. Do you understand me? Yes, they are. They are like their father, the devil. Yes, indeed. Thanks for the confirmation. Sis. It's judgment time. God, he's given us ample time, sis. He's so patient with us. But then when, oh, sis, let's talk about that before we get off of here. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about when God has given us time and space to repent. Man, and then we don't listen. And that judgment hit us. Then we want, look, then we want to cry out. But God has given us time and time. He sent people. He Look, he told you on your job. He sent, he sent YouTube videos to pop up on your screen. He sent his messengers to warn you. And you made excuses. And then when that judgment come down, it, it's not pretty. Because when the judgment comes down, God has given us ample time to get that nard juice out of your vein. And if you allow your feelings, your feelings, your feelings to dictate your actions, you will end up in hell. I'm just going to tell you, I was on my way. I was on my way till God woke me up. Do you understand me? So I thought I could serve two masters. I thought I could do things my way and God's way. And I'm telling you, God's way is better. I don't have to figure it all out. I just go to him and he shows me. I just go to him and I listen to what he has to tell me. I just go to him and he provides for me. I just go to him and he fights the warfare for me because I'm in his will. And when you're in his will, he takes care of you. He provides for you. He sees people about you. Do you understand me? So the narcissist is about to go down. Narcissists are, uh, are going down. Do you understand me? Do you see how people are being exposed? People that you thought was walking, they are being exposed more than ever in this season. And he's allowing that. He's allowing that the, 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 what they are behind closed doors to come to the light because he, he's shining a light up on that so people can make choices. So we all get to make choices about who we're going to follow and what we're going to do. This is the time to examine everything, everything, family. 
people have we should just said we got we most of us got pulled out of our families a lot of that if you have a family that is that is worshiping christ all y'all man you are winning do you understand me but for those of us who have been taken out understand that you are not alone you are not alone in this do you understand me you are not alone hallelujah it's just a nice name yes it is yes it is how do you go about knowing family members you might be asking the wrong person because look god pulled me up out of that all right so i mean you got to set some boundaries with them um i'm not sure what your your question is how do you go about narc family members look once you get out of a narcissistic relationship you got to examine the fruit and discern the root and a lot of times it's it started in our family so god allows that thing to be exposed so if you start to discern that somebody's in your family as a narcissist you have some choices to make you can go no contact all right that means that you don't or you know gray rock that you don't have you have minimal contact you may still talk to them but you don't share your business with it once you know somebody is narcissist you do not share any of your plans your business you don't be on the phone keep here with them you keep it short and sweet just checking on your mind you know whatever you don't let them into your spirit you don't let what they have to say because they're manipulators i don't care if it's your mama if it's your daddy if they have that spirit they are a manipulator they are using you they're only using you they can't look once they turn themselves over to that spirit that spirit takes over their mind so so they don't even see you they don't see you as a, a son and daughter they see you as an extension of themselves that is something that, that is you know for their own whatever it is that you provide for them so you can go no contact you can go low contact but a lot of times because these families are are unrepentant they harden their heart god pulls you out of that situation to protect you to protect you we are in a time where there are a lot more narcissists than psychology ever wants to admit we are in a time where where people are like almost turning like into zombies do you understand me they, they look these people are wicked all right and this is not to put fear in, in you or anything like that but we have to be ready and the only way you're going to be able to identify them is if you have yeshua you have the the blood of jesus all right you've accepted the blood of jesus do you understand me you are obedient not just with your mouth but you are walking this thing out do you understand me okay so it, a lot of times god will put with the day that we are in god is revealing to us even our family and i have videos on that okay um, but but once you recognize that, you got to put some distance between that. All right. You got to put some distance. All right. Even if it's for a short time or whatever, you got to put some distance so that you can heal. All right. They are very demonic, a beast like bathroom. And yes, they are. Yes. No contact with our families are where they are tears. Ooh, I'm glad you said that. That is what's happening. We are being the wheat is being separated for, from the tear. And I know it hurts. It hurt me to go no contact with my entire family, with my relatives. I call it. I have my family here. All right. But it hurt me to go no contact with my relatives. But now I know it was for my good. It was for my protection. All right. God heard the conversations that was being said behind my back. He knew what he knew. They knew that I was the light part of the light or had the light in me. I didn't recognize that. They did. They know who you are they know who you are demons know who you are we just don't know who we are demons identify you because you have christ inside of you i said this the other day demons when i cast out demons demons don't recognize me i know they said paul i know jesus i know but the demons recognize jesus inside of me so when they see that look some of them are fearful some of them are are they'll manifest in different ways so when somebody sees the light of god inside you they will manifest on you because they know that you have the light so they want they are here to test you they are here to see if you will submit if you will cower or you but we we're supposed to command them to cast to come out in jesus name come up and out do you understand me but when we don't know our authority when we don't know our identity and we've been weakened by the enemy we can't even we can't we can't even cast demons out of our children all right we can't look because we're in agreement with those demons and some of you are wondering how why why is my child manifesting all right that what 
the, look, that's their lineage for one. And for two, you're in agreement with the same demon. So how are you going to cast out demons that the same demons that are in your children are in you too? So are in your bloodline, you're in agreement with them. So how can you cast them out? Beelzebub does not cast out Beelzebub. It's only through the blood of Jesus Christ that we can cast out demons. It's only through the power of the Holy Spirit. All right. So they're not looking. They don't they're not looking for me when they scan us. They see something inside of us. They see the light. And that's why a lot of times we were abused. That's why we had a hard time. That's why we were rejected from birth or from childhood. Satan knows that re how rejection works. Do you understand me? All right. So they know, even if we don't know, they know a lot of times from an early age, those familiar spirits give them demonic intel about you. They give them a demonic intel about us. Do you understand me? So your family members, they you say they your family. Look, Jesus said, those who do the will of my father, mother, and brother um, of my father are my mother, brother, and sister. All right, that's really your family. We have to change the way even that we look at family. All right, because some of your family ain't going to heaven with you. Let's just be honest. We pray for them. We intercede for them, but they get to make choices and nobody gets to impede on anybody's free will. And only God knows if they've been turned over. All right. Once they, they, they've been given time and time to repent and they harden their hearts, God turns them over to their desires. And a lot of them, they don't look. That's what they want. That being a Jezebel, being a narcissist gives them what they want in their minds, in their wicked mind. And they think that they will never face judgment. They are so delusional because that's how Satan thinks. All right. Even I guess even Satan probably knows he's going to face judgment, but he doesn't care. So he inflicts hurt on God's children. All right. To get to God. We're just pawns. We're just pawns in this demonic game. Do you understand me? That's all we are. All right. God wants to protect us and bring us into the ark. Satan is trying to put us with, with, his, with his children. Narcissists are not God's children. We are all made in God's image, but not all of us are God's children. All right. When you answer God's voice, that makes you God's child. All right. When you submit to him. And submission is not a bad thing. Submission has gotten a bad rap, all right, because it's been used in the church and been used. Submission to God is not, to Elohim, is not a bad thing. I'm here to tell you, all right? I come as a witness. It's not a bad thing, but it's been misused, all right? The church, the four-wall church, not the ecclesia, the four-wall church has used it, all right? And they've been in agreement with Jezebel because a lot of, Jezebel loves the church. Jezebel is a witch. Jezebel loves infiltrating the four wall church. That's why a lot of you have been church hurt. The enemy knows what to do to harm us. Okay. So they're looking through our lineage, looking through, looking through our generational curses, looking through our, our family pathology, looking through it. Do you understand me to see where there's a legal right? Somebody asked me this the other day. I hope you're in here. All right. How, how do we know we're under curses? All you have to do is examine your life. Now there can be no curse without a cause. All right. So this is where we have to look in our life to see if there's a legal right. Now, everything ain't a curse. Some things are the trials and tribulations of life. So everything is not a curse, but you'll know a curse because you'll see cyclic patterns in your life. You'll see pattern after pattern. Oh, I'm dating art. I'm, I'm doing this. I'm financial poverty. That is a curse. When you serve God, God gives you blessings. The blessings will overtake you and no curse will be able to come against you. Do you understand me? So when there's a legal right, demons can come in. Demons get legalized. How do demons get legalized? Through trauma, through sin. Oh, you thought you were just sleeping with that man? You thought you were just sleeping with that woman? No, you just legalized some demons. Oh, you thought just be, you being with a narcissist, you think just because you got married to a narcissist, all you did was legalize your demons. That's all you did. That's all it is. So you have to break the legal right in order for the demon to leave. That's why narcissists don't get delivered. Can God do anything? Yes, he can do anything but fail. 
all right but narcissists don't go through deliverance i don't care if you try to do an exorcism i don't care if you try to do deliverance on them all right because narcissists do not have a change of heart repentance means that your heart posture is changed towards god and to and changed toward that sin to where you won't do it again a narcissist when they get in a situation when they get in the gym they'll even cry out to god They'll cry out to God to save me. They'll go to jail and they'll cry out to God to save me. All right. They'll be low on their luck and they'll or they're down on their not luck, but down, you know, down and out. And they'll cry out to God to save them. But as soon as they get up, as soon as they get well, they turn right back around to what they used to know, to what is familiar to them. All right. They will turn their back on God again because all they do is use God. All they do is use you and your prayers. They use believers. They love being in covenant with believers because we'll stay and pray. We'll cover them, cover them, cover them. Yes, we are called to call to pray, but we pray as Holy Spirit leads because God knows when they are reprobate. God knows. So you be led by prayer. God even told Jeremiah, stop praying for these people. They, he knows when they have heart in their hearts. So you wishy-washy cupcake Christians are always trying to tell somebody to just pray for them, just pray for them. You pray as the Holy Spirit leads. You pray as the Holy Spirit leads because sometimes God, well, not sometimes, God knows and he'll tell you to stop praying for them because I've turned my heart, from, I turn away from them and he'll divorce them like he did Israel. Why you right here talking about God, he's divorced, he'll divorce that narcissist. Yes, he will. He'll divorce that narcissist because that narcissist has turned away from God. And he's given them over and because God is a gentleman, he'll give them over to their desires. Do you understand me? Yes, he will. Yes, he is. So this is a battle for your mind. Hey, sis, it's good to see you. It's good to see you. Yes, follow sis on TikTok and Facebook. She's awesome. All right. So God will turn you over to that thing. That's right. Warning comes before destruction. Do you understand me? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. God's way is the only way and the best way. Thank you for this. I will be blocking him immediately. This is complicated. Amen. He's been trying to get me from that man. He disgusts me. All right. And I know that's hard. It's not easy to break that trauma bond, but you say that out of your mouth, you break the soul tie. I sever the soul tie against me and this person. You call them out by name. All right. You sever that soul tie with them. You sever that agreement. I repent, God. I turn away from this. All right. I rebuke this in the name of Jesus. God, forgive me. And you break that soul tie, you break that trauma bond, and then you have to work on breaking the trauma bond. All right, that's psychological. The soul tie is spiritual. All right, so you work on your mind, your will, and your emotions, your soul realm. Okay, all right, you work on breaking that. All right, and that comes by reading the word. That comes, look, you look, you got to put some things away. That comes by crucifying this flesh. That comes by transforming your mind. This song is in my, it's been in my head. Um, holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. And then the song says, take my heart and mold it. Take my mind and, and transform it. Take my will and conform it to your will. And that's what has to happen. You have to say, God, I'm giving up my will and you can't fool God with this. You're giving up your will. And I know that's contrary to your flesh because your flesh wants what it wants. The flesh wants what it wants. The heart wants what it wants. Man, you keep being led by your heart. You'll get led right into the pits of hell. Our hearts are deceptive. The world say, oh, follow your heart, follow, no, follow your heart. It'll lead you right to the pits of hell. It'll lead you right into another demonic soul child. I don't follow my heart. I follow the most high because my God says my heart is deceptive. Who could know it? So we think we're good. We're not that good. We're only good when we have the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, none of us are good. All right. So we're not as good as we think we are. We're only good by the washing and we're only good by the consecration of God making us better. Do you understand me? That's right. It's retribution time. And for those of us who have been obedient, for those of us who have followed the word of God, it is restoration time. It is restoration time. It is vindication time. It is retribution time. 
You thought that, look, the narcissist was getting away what they was doing. Oh, no, baby. Oh, no. God was just setting them up. He gave them time and space to repent, and they messed with the wrong child of God. They messed with the child of God this time. See, it's different. It's different when you mess with somebody that's outside of the will of God. But when you come against me, when you come against you and you're a chain breaker and you're inside the will of God, uh-oh, you know you done messed up now. You done messed up now, narcissist. You done messed up now, Jezebel. You done messed up now because now God is going to send the hounds of heaven against the hounds of Jezebel. Do you understand me? Then they will be released right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. We call for restoration, vindication, and retribution of your people according to your word and according to your plans. Not The narcissist does not get away with doing what they're doing. The problem is, nar- look, empathic people won't get out of the way. They, you won't get out of the way. You won't stop watching them. You won't untie yourself from them. So God, in order, look, God can't even, uh, he won't uh, release judgment on them because you are in the way, but that will only be for a season. That will be for a season. And if you don't get out of the way, you're going to get some judgment too. So get out of the way. Get out of the way. Hey, Nicole, God bless you. God bless you. It's good to see you. Yes, my dad, he has a monitoring spirit on him. Don't answer that questions, Dominique. Look, look, mm-mm. that's all. look. They be trying to figure out what your plans are because they gonna look. They about to look. They demons inside of them. If you know they're narcissists, don't tell a narcissist your plan. Don't tell them. A lot of times we be so happy, or you know, just to kiki on the phone, or you know, you know. And then we got that soul tie with our parents too. You can have a demonic soul tie, an ungodly soul tie with your parent too, where they're still controlling you, even um, even when you're older. All right. Mother-in-law, mothers. Okay. Go watch my message on that. So even with them, you have to sever that soul tie with them too. All right. And then you got to shut your mouth up. You don't tell the enemy your plans because they'll talk you out of your plans. They'll plant, they'll plant seeds of doubt in your plans. They'll speak curses over your plans. And a curse is different when a parent levies a curse out of their mouth against a child. That curse holds weight in the realm of the spirit. This is why we have to be careful as parents not to speak curses over our, our life, not to speak curses over our children's life, excuse me, not to speak curses, all right? We don't curse people with our mouths, okay? We don't do that, all right? All right, but when a narcissist, when a parent does that, it holds weight in the realm of the spirit. So that's why even with your parent, the God calls you to get away from them when they are like that because their curses hold weight. And then when you're under curses and you're not consecrated by the blood, those curses can stick. Do you understand me? So there can be no curse without a cause, but a parent knows things about you that you don't know. So God will tell you to get away even from your kinsmen because your kinsmen can curse you. And while you're all, look, worried about your feelings and look, 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 you better realize what this is. And I know it hurts, but you got to realize what this is. It's faith over feelings. Your cur- your kinsman can curse you. Your kinsman can curse you. This is why you have to break the generational curses. God has called you to be a curse breaker, to be a bloodline breaker. Okay. That's right. Suffering out of wish to live and their money will perish uh, along with them. No contact. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Vanessa. Right. How can Satan cast out Satan? He can't. He won't. The kingdom of hell is very organized. It's a very structured kingdom, right? Let me see if I had this picture. It's a very structured kingdom. All right. Now, we're not scared of their kingdom. All right. But we do have to be wise. It's good to see you, sis. Ignite's prayer time ministry. It's good to see you. We have to be wise. This is a kingdom. This is a kingdom structure, all right? The prince of this world, he is a light bearer. And no, for no wonder, for Satan masquerade, masquerades himself as an angel of light, he is not omnipresent, all right? He is not omnipresent, but he has demons. He has demons. He wants to be like God. That's why Satan, that's why narcissists have all the all Satan's characteristics because he they want to be like God. They want to be God over your life. All right. So in the kingdom of darkness, you have demon watchers like Dominique was saying. All right. You have there. These are monitoring spirits. These are spirits that watch your bloodline. All right. We had you have demon watchers. You have fallen angels. You have principalities. You have the queen of the coast. You have prince of Persia. Those are principalities that govern certain regions. You have the marine kingdom. You have Decepticons. These are demon watchers. And then you have the powers. You have the occult. You have divinations. You have 
uh, surveyors, surveyors, narcissists are surveyors. They are surveyors. They are part of that. They are monitoring spirit. You have witches that try to astral project. All right. The, these are the uh, where the demonic altars and curses come up under that. All right. This is why you don't tell narcissists your business because they are surveyors. They are there to to um, to uh, strategize against your plans. That's why none of your plans with a narcissist most of the time don't work out because the narcissist is praying against you. They're hoping they're keeping you under uh, uh, demonic curses and under uh warfare tactics like the smear campaign that the smear campaign is a distraction all right it is to keep you ruminating on them that is all a part of their powers they are witches and warlocks do you understand me jezebel was a high priestess a high-ranking witch all right then you have um uh i'll put that on there twice then you have spiritual with wickedness this is where narcissists well they fall on all these categories all right but you know demon watchers that was like the nephilim and all of them right but then you have spiritual wickedness to keep everything and this is what this is in this world narcissists are part of satan's kingdom of darkness all right they are here to unleash sexual immorality spirit of bathomus spirit of Baal. All right, the lust, the pride, the Balau spirit, all right, the unworthiness, they are here to unleash all of that in this in this natural realm. All right, but it's all it all manifests in the spiritual realm. Narcissists are are part of Satan's uh demonic kingdom. That's what this is. All right. All right, then we know we have the kingdom of heaven. We're supposed to be in this kingdom, not this kingdom. So if you're attached to a narcissist, you're attached to spiritual darkness. I'm just going to put it out there. You're attached to spiritual darkness. All right, then when you awaken, you, you got to come over to the kingdom of heaven. This is the bomb kingdom over here. This is the kingdom that will come, thy will be done. This is where the Godhead is, the triune. This is Yahweh, Yeshua, the Ruach, all right? This is where Jesus Christ is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Every knee shall bow. I don't care if you worked in the kingdom of darkness, even Satan is going to bow. One day Satan is going to bow. One day that narcissist is going to bow. That narcissist is going down. Go, don't get caught on the ship. Even the narcissist, even Lucifer, I can't wait to see the day where Lucifer bows down to Yeshua, my God. Oh, all power. This is the where your paraclete. This is where your comfort is. This is where your authority is derived from. This is everything that the kingdom of darkness works against. The kingdom of darkness works against your spiritual authority because if you ever figure out that you got all power, that Jesus Christ has all power and through you, all right, through, through you as God's vessel, you, you can walk in that deutimous power. If you ever figure out your identity, if you ever get away from that narcissist and walk in the power of the paraclete of the Holy Spirit, you'll be a bad woman walking. You'll be a bad man walking. All right, this is where the kingdom of heaven. All right, then you have your archangels. You have help. You got Michael. You got Gabriel. Hallelujah. You have the archangels. Don't you know? Look, Satan is not a formidable foe for God. Look, the archangel. Look, the archangel. Which one was it? Gabriel. Michael took Moses's body. Do you understand me? When they wore against Moses's body. Satan is not a formidable foe for God. The narcissist is, I wish you would get this. I wish you would get this. I wish if you don't leave with anything else tonight, I wish you would get that the narcissist is not even a formidable foe for you. Ah, but you don't know that. So they got to gaslight you and talk you out of your identity. So you don't realize that you got Deuteronomy's power rolling through your veins because of the blood of Yeshua. Ah, that's why they got to gaslight you. That's why. But then we got the archangels. We have dominions. You got the cherubims. They don't look like the angels, you know, the nice little pretty angels. They don't look like this. They don't look like this, but I love me some angels, right? But this ain't how the angels look. They got wheels. They got eyes all over so they can watch, so they can fight. No, these are some warring angels. See, these right here, this man's angels look pretty with little wings. No, they got wings, all right, but these are some protective angels. They guard the kingdom. Angels guard. 
Do you understand me? His angels right here, all around me right now, guarding me as I deliver this word. Hallelujah. It's angels that guard my perimeter, this part, this point of demarcation, this point around my house. My house has been anointed and, uh, and, and blessed all right, with holy oil. This is a blessed house, all right? The angels guard even, I have angels even on my porch, just like them, but we know the real angels are the angels that guard us in the realm of the spirit. So when you walk with God, when you commune with God, God sends his angels to protect you, all right? There's things that happen, danger, seen and unseen, that if we knew, we could really see into the spiritual realm. Those of us who are seers, sometimes you even see them, do you understand me? Sometimes God gives you a glimpse of these things all right sometimes you will feel it that's a seer too sometimes you see it sometimes you feel it sometimes you hear it those are all different versions of seeing a seeing prophet is not just ones who sees with their eyes and visions oh no we feel you use your five senses do you understand me as a seer prophet to see to hear to feel god didn't just give you that empathy so you could feel feelings for a daggone narcissist god gave you those feelings so you could feel danger oh i feel danger in here i see some clear and ever danger. Oh, I can pick up on the atmosphere when the atmosphere has shifted. I know when a witch has come in here because I'm a seer, because I feel, because I see, because I use my five senses, my discernment that God has given me. Now, sometimes I get it wrong because I question myself because I'm human. All right. But God gave you those five senses so you can pick up in the realm of the spirit what's going down so that you will be able to pick up in the realm of the spirit that there is evil among you and also you'll be able to discern good from evil discernment is not just seeing witches and warlocks it's also discerning when a man or woman is a true woman of god it's also discerning evil it's also discerning danger you'll be able to pick up wait a minute something about to happen here i, I need to leave this space don't quench your discernment don't let people second guess you your discernment is a weapon of warfare and that's why the narcissist the kingdom of darkness works so hard to discount you so that you think that you're crazy no they're the crazy ones for worshiping a losing kingdom for staying in partnership with a losing kingdom with a kingdom that is about to fall down babylon is about to fall all right, then we got the, what else is in the kingdom of heaven? God sends his messenger, his ministries, his five-fold ministry. Then you got the bridegroom, the remnant, the ecclesia, hallelujah, who go against various levels of, of warfare. The prophets, you are supposed to go against the Jezebel spirit. You're not supposed to come in bed with Jezebel. You're no different than a narcissistic Ahab. All right, so we got to come up out of that. We got to come up out of that. We're supposed to wage war against the kingdom of darkness, not get in bed with Babylon, unless you want to take part of her plagues. Do you understand me? And then narcissists also, look, look, these demonic spirits, these are unclean spirits. These are evil beings. These are fallen angels. These are workers of iniquity. Do you understand me? These narcissists are on demon time. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. So you got to get up out of this stuff. You got to get up out of this stuff. All right. All of these are open portals. These are, this is not an exhaustive list, but if you participate in these things, look, look, it won't be good. So you got to turn your heart back to God. All right. Turn your heart back to God. You don't want to be caught doing any of this stuff. All right. You don't know. It, it's, it's not good. It's not good. It's not good. All right. All right. Uh, and that's, I didn't have no notes. I just wanted to go off the dome. I just wanted to uh, give that message. I feel better. It's out. It's out, God. Uh, it's out, God. I hope that you are pleased. Do you understand me? I felt that that word was for somebody. You're waiting. You're waiting to the kids do this. You're waiting on the kids. You don't understand that your kids are under curses, that you are under curses. All right. And God, God has sent warning before his judgment. And it's not going to be pretty if you still stay in bed with Jezebel. It's not going to work out like you think it's work. You know, the narcissist is not going to wake up one day and thank you for all of your sacrifices, all of your, your hard work. Thank you for giving them money. Uh, thank you. It's not going to work out like that. The narcissists aren't thankful. They're, they feel entitled to your things. They have a lack of empathy. It's not you. It's not you, baby girl. It's not you, brother. It's not you. It's not you. Some of you are taking it personal. This is look. This is just like look. Narcissists are look. It's 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 business. It's never personal. 
All right. I mean, it's personal to us, but to them, it's just another day at the office. Do you understand me? That it's just another day at the office. All right. Let me read some of your comments. Thank you, Violet. Let me see what that is. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. May God return that to you over and above measure. Hallelujah. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Discernment is key. Discernment saves lives. Ooh, ooh, you can pick that thing up in the realm of the spirit. Because some, some people you can't discern. I always say this, you can't discern uh, some people, but you know, just by your, your, you know, what you see, it has to be discerned by Holy Spirit and he will tell you. Yes, they are angels. Yes, there are angels above me, beneath me. They're all around me. My father's angels are protecting me everywhere. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, indeed. Uh, let me see. Yes, get from amongst your kin. Your Yes, sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to. Uh, Cheryl, oh, Cheryl, go watch my message. Um, I just did a message on um, narcissistic um, mothers, okay? I want to bless you. And it's hard. It can be hard um, when you have a narcissistic mother, but um, yeah, yeah, it, it can be hard. You're not alone, okay? But uh, every, look, I promise about probably about 99% of your questions, all right, are in that video. I just did a message um, right before Mother's Day on narcissistic mothers, mother-in-laws, and um, I think narcissistic women in, in general. And I talk about all of that in that message, okay? That would help you. Hello, brother LJ. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's definitely a structured kingdom, which is why we have to make sure we don't give the enemy permission or access to um to us absolutely when i think about the things that i that i've done and i was like oh my goodness i thought i was having fun and i was just giving demons legal right to me no no see satan makes sin look so tempting yes he makes sin look so tempting but it's not thank you abra is that your name that's pretty i love you so much i thank god for your ministry the trauma i'm going through right now with leaving the narcissist has has been unbecoming i felt like i've been resurrected from life support hallelujah 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 that's it that's what the word of god does yes that's what the word god bless you and then don't forget um amber if you can get in cbu all right i have rock your crown coming up for women um on on um june 1st okay when we come together and, and wear our god-given crowns for women who have been a, uh, a part of narcissist abuse so if you enjoyed this conversation i definitely um encourage you to come there um you, it's by donations so you can get 50 cents you can give a dollar all right um whatever the holy spirit leads you to get and the reason i um ask for a donation for that because i if you i put like this is free anything you know most things i do are free but cbu my coaching um, and I have a message on from hiding to healing. Um, um, that one is by donation. Okay. So I give away a lot of stuff for free, but I, I'm pouring out um, and I have some, some uh, resources and things that I want to give you there. So that's more um, coaching. Okay. Um, but we just come together and we rock our crowns and then you can join us. If you can't do any of that uh, every Saturday um, at 1 PM, I usually don't go live, but I have a message for me and my husband um, this Saturday. So join me live um, here Saturdays at 1 PM. Then I'm on Instagram, TikTok, um, um, everywhere. Okay. Um, but, but there, there is more out here. All right. Um, and a lot of us felt like we were dying in these relationships. So you need the word of God. You need community. You need to find your, what I call your 18. Okay. Um, because narcissists want you isolated. They want you all alone. They want you to feel like you're the one going down, but it's really them. It's all projection. Everything that they want to make you feel, or they, everything that they, they say to you is really projection. It's really how they feel about themselves. And then they want that stuff buried so deep in your subconscious where you think you're going to die. You think you're never going to make it out. You think you're going to be nothing without them. And that is a lie from the pits of hell. You will be everything. You, you, I don't care. You can lose it all. You, when you are, a, I don't want to say a hustler, but when you have, when not a hustler, when you have God's spirit inside of you, you can lose it all. You can lose it all, but you know, you lose to win again. I don't worry. Look, I don't worry about especially material things. I look, I know what's inside of me and I know who my God is. 
I know who my God is. So I know if I lose, all I'm going to do is get it back. I know if I get down, all I'm going to do is get up. You can knock me down nine times and I guarantee you I'm going to get up 10. Do you understand me? I guarantee, look, if you throw me a lemon, I'm going to make some lemonade out of it. That's just my mindset. So when you have that mindset, there is nothing that the kingdom of darkness can do to you. All right. That you know that God, look, like I said, Saturday, either God is going to help you to overcome it or he's going to give you the strength to, to endure that thorn. Either way, a win is a win. When you are a child of God, a win is a win. It's never a loss. It feels like a loss because a lot of times it's a loss to our ego. We don't like to, and especially, you know, we don't like to start over again. We don't like to start over again. Do you hear me? We just, we don't like it. We don't, we feel like we're going back, but uh, look, I will fall. Look, I will go back to go forward. Do you understand me? Because when I fall down, God picks me up. And it's the same thing with you. The nar you, And it looks like the narcissist is winning for a while. And I was doing like David. I was lamenting. I was crying out. I was like, God, you how long you going to let them look? How long, God? Man, especially when I was with that sociopath and it looked like, you know, I got the restraining order. And it, he violating the order and I'm calling the police and, you know, go, go listen to my story. All right. I have videos on my story. All right. And, and going, getting a restraining order and going through domestic violence and doing all that. And I'm like, God, how can it look like he's still winning? And it's not about him, but I'm like, God. God, come on now, God. I know I ain't the only one that have those conversations with God. But then I had to learn in that season, I didn't know I was getting like getting to know God. You know what I mean? Now I know when it looks like my enemy is going to win. Now my I'm, I have matured in faith because I persevered. And my perseverance produced character. It produced hope. It produced faith. So now, now I know to plead the blood of Jesus. Now I know to trust God at his word. If he says he will make my enemies uh, my footstool, or he says he will elevate me, or he says, look, look, they come when they come against me, they're really coming against him. Now I know to trust him at his word because I've matured in faith. And the more you mature in faith, you know that God, God is not a man. He's not like our natural father and mother. He does not lie. His word never returns void. So if he says it, you hold on to God's hand and you don't release it. You don't release it. You keep going. And it doesn't matter if it looks like the narcissist is winning. Your job is to stand. Your job is to stand against the block, to stand against the enemy, to stand against the wiles and schemes of the enemy. Your job is to stand, to stand, to stand, to stand, not let it in. Oh, block, block, because all that's all it is. The Hoover, oh, let me see what they're doing. It's not because they love you. It's not because they miss you. It is to get in. It is, remember, you're a soldier. You have armor. And the enemy's job is to tink your armor. The enemy's job is to give legal right. And then when he gets legal right through, when, you know, through anger, through sin, through whatever, he stands in the courts of heaven, all right? He comes to God and he says, look, no, this, look, this one is mine. I got legal right. I have legal access. This is all about legalities, covenants, and altars. So now he can stand, try to, because he's an accuser. He's the Satan, all right? He's an adversary. He's an accuser. That's what Lucifer is, all right? Well, that's what Satan is. He's the Satan. He's an accuser. So now he can stand before God in the courts of heaven. And he can say, look, look, uh-uh, look, no, no, no. Remember when they see in here, they didn't repent against them. They let me in. Uh-uh, they're in agreement with, so I have a right to curse them. I have a right I have a right because they look, they have something that belongs to my, to my kingdom. So this is why you got to get rid of what the narcissist had. When I went no contact with my, with, with my relatives, it wasn't personal. All right. It was not personal. It was because of the spiritual implications of being tied to them meant like our name said, I have new DNA. Everything about me has been made new. All right. So I couldn't stay tied to them doing the work that I do. How can I stay tied to Jezebel doing what I do? How could I be an effective deliverance minister? How can I coach women and tell them to make it out of these situations if I'm still tied to Jezebel? So God had, look, look, God will have you be about that thing so your witness won't be tainted. All right. So I can't tell you to go no contact. And I'm still over here in contact. I'm still over here. I'm still over here picking up the phone. I'm still over here falling for the Hoover. How can I tell you something? No, that's going to that'll mess with your conscience when you don't live what you preach. It should anyway. It should prick your spirit. 
All right. So, so, so yeah, you got, you got to be about this. You got to be about this. This is a faith wall. So remember, demons want legal rights. They, this is all about legal rights. So he can stand in the courts of heaven and accuse you of doing things. This is why you got to learn about the courts of heaven. You got to learn how to petition God as a righteous judge. You got to be in right standing and holiness and righteousness is armor. Sin taints your armor. Sin taints your armor. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? Sin taints your armor. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Violin. No, they do. They do. They do. Look at how they acting out now. They don't even hide anymore. Hallelujah, Tammy. They don't even hide anymore. Do you we see how Baal worship? Just look at the, the agendas. Look at the LGBT. Look at the agendas. I love you with the love of Christ, but I will never. I don't. I don't. I don't. This is an agenda. Again, legal rights. Again, legal rights. We're legalizing. We're legalizing things in the realm of the spirit. All right. So no. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Yes, indeed. God bless you, Abra. God bless you. Yes, you do. God bless your business. And may Yahweh continue to bless your mouth and fill your belly with, with the fire of God. We need this ministry for such a time as this. For such a time as this. For such, you were born for such a time as this. You were. Thank you for that, Arne. You were. You were born for such a time as this. Hello, Janet. It's good to see you. Yes. Yes. You have been missed. God bless you. I rock with you. Thank you so much for your seat. May God return it back to you over and above measure. I rock with you. You are a bomb. I honestly feel like I would have left that situation had it not been uh, or for you exposing the enemy. Oh, I know what you mean. The devil full of you. Love you too. God bless you. And this is why we have to be on post. We never know who can be impacted by our testimony. And we think, well, I shouldn't say anything. Man, that fire of God get in me. And I, it's like that, that video I put, I don't be wanting to say anything. Truth be told, I don't. I didn't want to come over here. I wanted to take my shower. I got off the, the book launch thing. I wanted to take my shower and go eat and lay down and, and study. Truth be told. But this thing, I was like, God, is somebody, is somebody, God was saying, is somebody that is, that I'm trying to, to release uh, somebody that I'm trying to heal and they are, they are fighting against me. They don't come out. They don't come out. They won't come out. And I'm trying to, before I release judgment on that narcissist, all right, I'm trying to get them to safety. I'm trying to get them to the ark. God is trying to get you to the ark. And this is men and women. Don't think that this is just for women. Men go through abuse. Oh, and Jezebel has turned up. Don't think these women, look, look, don't think these women won't abuse you. Yes, they will. A lot of us have narcissistic mothers, so we live with this. We know, we know men are the face of narcissist abuse. Men are diagnosed with narcissist abuse more, but women Jezebels are rampant nowadays and they are raising children. They are leading them astray. Do you understand me? So we have to break out of this, okay? So somebody, I don't know who this word was for. You'll know it. If, know if it's for you. Hello, Lyris. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Does the narc know they're being used by the enemy? Oh, deception is tricky. I think they know something isn't right. But when you're deceived, you think you're right. <laughs> and you can't... They're, God has blinded them just like he did with Pharaoh. Um, I, they know something is not right about them. They know because they know because they hide it. If you don't think that anything's wrong and a narcissist is very selective about who they abuse. It's like, you know, if, if, if they couldn't help it, if they didn't have free will, it would be just, they will walk around abusing everybody they come in contact with. A narcissist, they zone, they, they scan you again. they those demonic eyes, those familiar spirits, they're scanning to see who is a who is a worthy target, who will give them empathy, who will give them, who will, you know, who doesn't have boundaries, who has, who is a scapegoat. All right. They're scanning to see who you are in the realm of the spirit. So they know. I think they do know. I don't know if they think of it like that, though. I don't know how they think of it. All right. But they know something is wrong with them. They know enough to hide it. If you didn't think something was wrong, you wouldn't try to hide it. And you and they will go around abusing everybody. They, they're very selective. 
they pick, they know, like even in a family, when I think about um, molestation, because molestation is is uh, uh, very much, sexual abuse is very much how Satan uses, um, or a tool that Satan uses to um, inflict pain on people. But when an abuser um, is searching for a target, they look for specific traits in that target. They look for somebody who's not protected. They look for somebody who, you know, they look for certain things in that in that person. Um, and, and then a narcissist knows when you have boundaries, they they ain't gonna waste too much time with you. They're not, they're not. They're not, they gonna look, they they can't stand, they'll just make up lies about you and going on. Once they see that you see who they are, they don't have time for you. So do they know, bottom line, do they know? I don't know if they know they're being used by the enemy, but they know that they know something wrong with them. I do think that if anybody else has anything about that, they can, you can answer that in the question. Um, but a lot of them are so de deceptive and, and so deceived. They think that some of them, they think that they're Christians. They think that they're deceived. Deception. They're a deception. They're a deception. Amen. They're a deception. We miss you too, Janet. The our job is to strip you and leave you vulnerable in the spirit. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Right. He said, what did he say? He said, the Lord rebuke you. That's right. He said, the Lord rebukes you, Satan. Yep. The Lord rebuke, rebuke you. Right. Right. You said it. I'll be trying to look now. Now, when it comes to the family and, and children, I'll be trying to tread lightly. I, I do be trying to tread lightly, but y'all said it. You got to cut it in this season. And this season, I wouldn't play around with it because the weed is being separated from the tear. All right. Mm hmm. Yeah. You can't let that devil in, Abra. You can't let him in. You can't let him in. And you got to repent. You got to repent. OK, watch my message on spiritual deliverance. If you want to be free, you got to repent. All right. I don't know if we talking about your husband or boyfriend. If we talking about boy, I mean, don't sleep with them. Don't sleep with them. I don't care if it's your husband. Look, why? Once you know that they're narcissists, you are sleeping with demons. You are sleeping with demons. Okay. Don't let them, don't let that narc juice in, um, in your vein. See, and taint your armor. God bless you, Misty. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Amen. Oh, my goodness, Jenny. God bless you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Jesus. We pray for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, indeed. Right. They'll act like frenemies, won't they? They're very crafty. Yes, indeed. It is life and death. Mm -hmm. Life and death. Hello, wise uh, coaching, uh, council coaching and consulting, WC3. <laughs> WC3, that's what I'm going to say. Yes, indeed. Mm. Right. In fact, Shannon, because my mom, when my mom showed up, um, in my house, she asked if I thought she was crazy and if something was wrong with her. I told her possibly they know, they know, right? Because when I when I told um <laughs> I don't suggest you tell. I like I always say, unless you want to blow up the spot, if you can just get away from them and divorce them and never, I mean, you know, I mean, like a no go, no contact, that's really the best thing. If you tell them that you know that they're narcissists, I mean, you already gonna be public enemy, enemy number one, but now they know that you know. So now they, that smear campaign, ooh, ooh, you talk about smear campaign. The smear campaign is different when it's from your mother, <laughs> when it's from your relatives. It is different, all right? It is different when people don't believe you. Yeah, that's right. You want peace. Yes, sexually transmitted demons because you're, you're having sex with their demons. That's what, that's what happens. Sex is a, it's a spiritual exchange. Like, like you're tying yourself. And then when you think about the narcissist, like it's really disgusting. I told you, I was like, like, it's really disgusting. When I said that, and I think about, and I, and you know, like during the marriage, there was infidelity and all this stuff. And, and those, that was what I knew about. And then you start to think about all the times where things didn't add up. And I, and I thought about, you know, when I talked to the exes and I was like, I don't know how many bodies are, are tied to this man. And I was 
Oh, mm -mm. that's why you got to. I had to go through consecration. God had to make me where there was no residue of my past on me. Do you understand me? This is why you got to be. You got to go through this healing process, okay? Um, mm -hmm. you got to go through this healing process. It is. It's like sleeping with the enemy. Um, astral projection. That's where witches uh, leave their bodies. And then, okay, so they're like in a sleep state. Their physical body is sleep. All right. Um, and then their spiritual body comes to visit you um, wherever you at. So they, they, they leave their body um, in the realm of the spirit. And then they astral project to it, um, into your home or into wherever. And they try to see. If you've seen Dr. Sleep, has anybody ever seen Dr. Sleep? Um, I don't know if I would recommend that now. I watched, we uh, we saw it um, before, but if you've seen Dr. Sleep, that's what it shows you what, um, I don't I don't know if I, I don't, I'm not saying I recommend it, but if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Where the witch went to sleep and she was peering in. She was, oh, that's a good example. Thank God. So she was, it was a child. She was like, the. it actually shows you a lot about good and evil and how it works. So the child was like a chosen child and the child had, I don't know. I don't know if this was witchcraft. It didn't seem like witchcraft. I, that's why I'm saying I don't recommend it. But if you've seen it, you understand. But the child, let's just say, let's just say for for what we're discussion sake that the child was, um, let's just say she was a chosen child, let's say by the Holy Spirit, right? And so the witch could not, the, the child's powers were stronger than the witches. And so in that movie, the witches were, and I'm, if you haven't seen, I'm sorry, um, spoiler alert. All right, so click off. But um, they were they were siphoning children's blood. What is that called? Uh, dang, I'll talk about it all the time. Um, sp like spirit cooking and and what is it called where they drink the children's blood? Like what these celebrities in Drinker They 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 were showing you like how these celebrities in that movie it told a lot. They showed how these how these witches use children's blood um to stay young and youthful like madonna and and uh what's her name chrissy Teigen and all of them like these people are into hollywood if you haven't seen my messages on hollywood and celebrities and and i think i'll talk about it in here nandy let me see if i can find it i talked about that not too long ago um but yeah celebrities witchcraft and narcissism so i'm gonna leave that in here but yeah so they leave their body that's why i say like if you try to astral project over here this is why you got to be covered under the blood. Do you understand me? Do we we really don't really understand that this is a spiritual war? And if we understood, we would pray without ceasing. We really would. We would pray without ceasing. Now I say, when if you wish, if you ever try to astral project here, you will get stuck and you will not leave your body uh, by the fire. You will be met with the fire of God. If you ever try to astral project into my home, you will be met with the fire of God, and you won't make it back into your body. I don't play with witches. You can play. I know something. Oh, just bless them. The witches are inherently cursed. Witches are inherently cursed. All right, now we don't, I don't send curses back to them or nothing like that. I'm not saying that. All right, but if you come over here, don't start none, won't be none. Don't start none, won't be none. All right, but but they're again, they're looking for legal access. This is why, look, get rid of the narcissist stuff. That the narcissist stuff act as a, act as like a signal. So when you have their stuff, this is why narcissists purposely give you gifts and give you things sometimes, right? Because that gift now in the realm, you're looking at it as a gift. That's why I don't know. I, I don't want your gift. I don't know. Unless I know you and know your spirit tested. I, I'm, I'm cautious about who touched me. I'm caught. I'm cautious about these things. I'm not scared, but I'm cautious. You know what I'm saying? Because I know, I know in these circles, which is love to, to infiltrate. And they love to appear as angels of light as we talk about, right? So this is why you get rid of the narcissist stuff because now that acts as a ley line. If you know about witches, silver cords and ley lines and things, what they give you can act and they, and they curse these objects. And you're looking at it as just a gift. They curse these objects. And so now you're wondering what has given them legal right unto my home? How is this thing able to come into my home? Why is this spirit spouse in my home? Because they've been legalized somehow. And your job is to sit with God to figure out 
what is the legal right so it can be cast out so you can repent so if demons are visiting you at night if spirits are visiting you you got to figure out you got to go to the word and as i say you got to go to work you need deliverance and deliverance is layered. But when you, this is why you got to look, sometimes you got to throw out the bed. Sometimes you got to throw things out because that is an altar that can be set up as an altar. Narcissists know what they doing. Oh, some of these narcissists are wicked. And I ain't going to say some of them, all of them are wicked, but especially, um, and uh, where's another video that I talked about this sex ties and, uh, soul. let me see um what is it called it's like sex uh sex demons or something i just talked about this not too long ago no about five months ago i think i talked about this if you check my videos it's like uh i can't even remember the name of it my memory is really pretty good but i talked about sex demons and and how narcissists use um sex to um to strengthen the trauma bond, to strengthen um, the witchcraft. These narcissists be doing spells on people at night and stuff like that. You think they staring at you when you sleep? How many of you have caught the narcissist staring at you and speaking over you at night? Oh, oh. How many of you have gotten gifts from the narcissist? Sometimes you look, throw it in the trash. Throw it in the trash. Throw it in, some things need to be thrown in the trash. When I left that narcissist, everything, look, I didn't want, I don't want nothing of no nary narcissist because they stuff is cursed. All right. And some of them purposely put curses on things, sex magic. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sex, it was sex magic. I was talking about sex magic. Let me put it on here. Deep, narcissist, demon love, uh, sex, uh, spells and sex magic. I'll talk about that in here. All right. Right. That's what they do. A lot of them be speaking curses over you. Remember, there can be, thank you, sis. Yes. A, a lot of, like you're saying, there can be no curse without a cause, but because you're in covenant with them, the curse can stand. The curse can stand. It's legal rights, okay? Legal rights. Right. They channel their demons on you. Right. Especially through sex. Oh, you think they staring into your eyes? No, they're hypnotizing you. That's what they're doing. That's what they're trying to do. Oh, you thought that was deep when they was look, looking into your eyes and staring into your soul. They're pissing your soul. They're putting a spell on you. That song, I'll put a spell on you because you're mine. Look, that's what, they, that's what they think. And then you, we make covenants with them. I'll never leave you. I'll never leave you. Mm, you just made a covenant with that demon. I'll never leave you. Oh, this is yours. We be doing all that, you know, that nasty talk. This is yours. Ain't nobody getting this. This is yours, man. You better rebuke that. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. It ain't theirs. It's God's. I'm consecrated. I'm a vessel for the most high. Rebuke that. Rebuke that. Hey, Joy. We just sit here talking. You know, we just sit here talking. All right. It's good to see you. Yeah, we just sit here talking today. All right. Yes, 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 indeed. So, yeah, so they'll, um, yes, plead the blood of Jesus. And it's not like, again, not to make you scared. It just, when we have knowledge, all right, the just are saved through knowledge. People perish because of lack of knowledge. I wish, I'm only telling you this because I wish I knew this stuff. I wish because I was under curses. I wish somebody would have told me this, that when I have sex or when I do these things outside of marriage, I thought, oh, just because I, lo I love him, we go together. I ain't know no better. I mean, I knew better, but I didn't know the consequences. Like my actions have generational consequences and implications. Like this is just deeper than my desires. Like this can affect my children just as blessings can be passed to my children and my children's children. Curses can be passed down to your children and children's children. We don't want that. We don't want that. Right. They visit you when you sleep. Right. Like a signal. Right. Like a signal. So that that item, the occultic item, this is why you don't sage. This is why you don't smudge or use uh, uh, sage for smudging. You use sage in your dressing. 
you sage in your food, but you don't use it to ward off demons. Again, that's a trick of Satan. So all you're doing is inviting those demons in. When you do that, you're making a covenant. You're making an agreement with them for those demons to protect you. And, and demons, the demons seem, and it'll seem peaceful for a little while. It'll seem peaceful. That's how the demonic kingdom works. It seems to give you what you want. But that's really, peace is only found in Jehovah Shalom. It's not found in smudging. When you're a believer, the Holy Spirit is the bomb.com. Uh, I don't mean any disrespect, God. God protects you. You don't need any crystals. Crystals, you can use it in your word on your, your neck for, for, you know, on your, you know, jewelry, but you don't use it for protection. You don't use it for protection. All right. Those things act as a signal to the demonic realm. You're, you're using tools of the occult. So those things in, in themselves are not bad, but how you use them. All right. Is, 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 is what makes the difference. But then you're using it as a tool, as a weapon of, of witchcraft, a message of the occult. All right. 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 What happened when the witch tried to go to that child and doctor sleep? She, uh, if I remember, she couldn't penetrate it. And that's when she knew that that child had something stronger than what she had. And, and then it ended up being a show off between her and, and that child. And it didn't work out for the witch. It never works out for the witch. I don't know why witches like, cause they're delusional for one, but I don't know why they promote their witchcraft. Like it doesn't work out for witches in the end. Like the Bible says, suffer not a witch to live. Like it doesn't work out for witches. It doesn't work out for people who see witches and don't repent. Did it work out for Saul? Did it work out when he saw the witch at indoor? Did it work out? It does not work out. So a lot of us have went to psychic mediums, especially after narcissist abuse. Oh, it was just me. Oh, I went. I went because I, I was trying to figure out. You know, and I didn't think, I thought, well, I saw a spiritual advisor. He didn't call it something, a spiritual advisor. But then when God showed me later, like he wasn't getting his, his knowledge from the Holy Spirit. So they'll be right. That's the thing. Like they'll be right with their information. That doesn't mean just because somebody does, is right. Doesn't mean that they're getting their information from the most high. These are diviners, just like the girl all right, with Paul and Silas, she she was saying Jesus, Jesus, but she wasn't really with them. She wasn't really with them, right? She wasn't really with them. And Paul had to discern because to the eye, everybody else would have been like, oh yeah, she's a follower of Christ. She's a follower of Christ. She's saying Jesus. She's saying, look at these men. She's saying, you know, you know, she's saying the right thing. But by the spirit, Paul had to turn around to that little girl and cast that demon of divination up out of her. Do you understand me? So a lot of people, a lot of time, these people, they, they have the, the demonic intel, but it's not coming from the right source. They're charismatic. All right. They seem to, to be of God, but their spirit and their heart is not right. All right. We, I talked about this the other day with, um, what was the name of that message? When I went live the other day with Lovi and all, you know, all them false prophets and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Mike Todd, all them, like I talked about all that. Um, I forgot the name of the message that quick, but I just, I just gave that last week. So it's on there. So, um, no, we have to see we have to see these things and we can only see this by the, by the Holy spirit. Everybody that calls on Jesus name or everybody that um, now they are so brazen. They'll use Jesus name there, you know, but Jesus said, you know, behold, I'll send you out of, as sheep amongst wolves. So they, they are out here. We're amongst wolves. The path is narrow, right? The path is narrow. Mm -hmm. Watching this channel has really, hey, Jessica has really helped me with going no contact. I will never put myself in that situation again with the help of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. Yes. Adrenochrome. Y'all's daughter. Yeah. That's exactly what it, what it was. Adrenochrome. They, they're, if they made a movie about it, if they made a movie about it, they are doing it. Okay. Hey, Miss Breakable. Uh, unbreakable. Unbreakable. I stand, uh, Correct it. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I got a lot of rebuking and reclaiming to do. 
Mm -hmm. used to call, it, call each other mind. That's why we don't lay claim to narcissists, people. And I know it takes a little while to get out of that habit. You'd be like, my narcissist, my, that is not your narcissist unless it is. Unless you want to lay claim to a, 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 a demonized person. That person is not yours. And in modern day psychology and in um, if you see forums a lot with narcissist survivors, they'll always be saying my narcissist. And that just makes me cringe because I'm like, that narcissist is not yours. That narcissist is not yours, exactly, for lack of knowledge. So this is why we teach. This is why we, you know, come out with God's word. It's not because um, we necessarily want to. It's because, I mean, we have a responsibility to teach and preach the, the true gospel as believers. And even though, yeah, like I said, I never wanted to be on YouTube. I never wanted, wanted this, but... God had called me and I, and I answered. So not everybody that's called, um, answers the call. Some people are so bogged down and, and are not able to overcome their trauma. So they just stay hidden. They stay a shell of themselves, not knowing that through the power of Jesus Christ, you can come out of that and you can be everything that the narcissist said you wouldn't, but it's time to get up out of these. My whole point for coming out of here on here today, um, this was just in my spirit um, that the narcissist is going down and, and it's time to exit. And I felt like God wanted me to talk to somebody again. We prophesy in part. I don't know who that is for, but um, somebody is second guessing themselves and second guessing their decisions. And they're thinking about going back and thinking about answering the call. Um, you got to know what's on the other line when you answer that call. You see, I, I really, if, like I said, if you don't get anything out of this, like start to see things with your spiritual eyes. Ask God for, not your third eye. Don't mess with none of that other stuff. Ask God to awaken the eyes of your understanding where you see things, where you don't just see. Like if I have a conversation with somebody, like, and it's just natural. Like I hear, I hear, I see the person, but I'm discerning what they're really saying. And it's something that is just natural, right? Like I hear, I, I hear what you're saying, girl, but your spirit, something about your spirit just does not sit well with me. And I used to discount that and, oh, and I, and I go to God and I'm like, God, what is this? What is this? Cause I like, I like you, but your spirit, something about your spirit is not right. And it's not trauma. It's not trauma. I deal with I deal with my trauma, you know, not my trauma. I deal with trauma. So I, I try to make sure that it's not my feelings and it's not anything personal or anything like that. And then if I don't have peace about that situation, it's, it's not personal. It's not personal. All right. And I know I said earlier with narcissists, it's not, but it's it's not when you when it's spiritual warfare, it's not, it's not personal. You are you have to protect yourself. And that's why I, it's not that I wanted to go no contact with my relatives. I needed to because God, for one, God told me to, and for two, it was protection. So rejection seems like um it, it hurts, but it's really to protect you. So we see over and over in the Bible where people have had to come out of their kinsmen, where people, where God pulled them out. He said that wheat and tear will grow up the same, but I'm in the, in the end, I'm going to separate the two. So count it all joy. I know it doesn't feel like joy when you're being ripped out of situations and your heart is, is broken. Go watch my message from Saturday. Okay. When your heart is broken because narcissist abuse is, is different. It's different because it's demonic. It's wicked. And their job is to hurt you and, and, and hurt you with maximum damage so that you never, ever recover. And then it's like the audacious nature of a narcissist. And then when you start getting better and you start looking better and, and they have the nerve to come around and you think if you're not healed, you'll, you'll think with your, your, your natural mind, oh, they want me. You have to kill that ego. You have to heal the ego. Ego, you have to heal the ego. That's part of your healing journey is to heal the ego because you'll think, oh, it's me. Oh, they want me. No, that narcissist, they don't want that. They, they may want you, but they want your spirit. They want to siphon your spirit. The narcissist can't live without supply. We can live without them. That's the tragic part. 
you can live with a narcissist. A narcissist just convinces you that you can't live without them, that you'll never find better, that you can't make it, that you'll never bounce back. And I'm here to tell you that the devil is an all out liar. You will love again. You will recover. You, God says, I'll recover you from every situation. So if you know God to be your God, you come out of agreement with the devil's lies. Again, this is about agreements. This is about altars. This is about covenants. So you got to see things with your spiritual eyes. You ask God to awaken your eyes to where you can discern. Ask God for wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Ask God for wisdom so that you see things, so that you see things beyond what people are saying to you. All right. And you see things beyond the veil of your trauma. OK, so when you see that, when you see with your spiritual eyes, you don't play around with narcissists. They're your enemy. And I'm not here to, oh, it's us against them. It is what it is. You understand me? It is what it is. This is the weed and the tear. These are, this is the battle of two kingdoms. And you're going to have to make a choice. And those of you who want to stay on the sidelines and stay in the middle, you're, you're not going to be able to do that for much longer. You're going to have to pick a side. And if you pick the side of the narcissist, the narcissist is going down. Okay. You'll be on the wrong team, on the wrong ship. Though That ship is sinking like the Titanic. The, the, the people are sinking. The fat lady is singing. Do you understand me? They, they, they going they look. It's going down. When I ever see the narc in my dream, I knew I'm gonna be under attack. Um, and this is look, look. You rebuke that. You rebuke that. You rebuke that in the name of Jesus, because things manifest in the spiritual realm before it happens in the natural realm. So um that can be a test it can be a number of things so just ask god for wisdom but you re i rebuke that if i have a dream about I, I rebuke that in the name of jesus i don't know what games you playing uh-uh in the name of jesus any familiar spirits any you know you go to war against that all right and you just cancel it you know you, you cancel it and then you you understand that it may try to manifest in the natural so when it comes you won't sometimes god sends us dreams to warn us too he might be trying to warn you that they're they're trying to come back he might be trying to warn you so dreams have many um, different meanings. It could be warnings. It could be, um, you know, things trying to manifest in the natural realm. It, it could be a number of things. So our, our, pay attention to your dreams. Pay attention to your dream life. And then this is why you want to put on your armor of God. You want you make sure you pray before you go to sleep. You make sure you cover yourself. All right. I used to listen um, to like prayers about demons and and just different um, um you know, uh, Holy Spirit um, led things when I went to sleep. And now like, it's almost like I can feel myself battling in the spirit. It's like, you know, I don't know if that makes sense. Like I can feel like the word is so embedded into me and that's what you want. You want to leave, live, breathe and eat the word. And I don't mean like in a super religious type of way where the word you embody the word so much so that even when you sleep, you're speaking the word because it's so embedded in your DNA. It's so embedded in your subconscious mind. This is why we have to read and study the Bible. The other books are okay to supplement, but the word of God is your sword. You have to know it in order to use it and to yield your sword. That's your weapon. In the military, if we were found without our weapon, we got in trouble when we were in the field or when we were in war and different things, if we were downrange and we didn't have our weapon, we could get in serious trouble. And yet we take care of our natural weapon much more than we do our spiritual weapon, but our spiritual weapon yields dunamis power. Our spiritual weapon is where, look, all, look, it has power beyond belief. The word is a living word, but yet we don't use it like that. This is why it has to be so embedded in your DNA. Read the word, study the word. The videos are good, but you got to study the word. And this is how you will start to know when something and someone isn't right. And you'll know when God is trying to warn you. You'll know when the ship is about to go down. You'll know because God is very strategic. He is a God. He is a God of war. He is a God of love and he is a God of war. 
All right. So he will give you strategy. He is an ultimate strategist. God is so smart. And he'll have somebody come to you and he'll have somebody bless you. And you'll, you know, he'll just, just the way he's able to move people. And this is why we have to be on post and incline ourselves to his ear. This is why God made you empathetic. He wanted you to be inclined to his ear. He wanted your heart to be in alignment with his heart. This is why we don't turn. This is why we forgive, why we don't turn to be like narcissists. Because if we do that, then God can't use you effectively. That means the kingdom of darkness will get to use you because unforgiveness belongs to the kingdom of darkness. So God can't use you if you're unforgiving. God can't use you if you're loaded, loaded down with trauma and sin. So this is why he sends you into spiritual ICU and to the wilderness and different places where he can clean you up. And then he puts you back out there on the battlefield again. All right. All right. But you got to start thinking with your with your spirit, not that spiritual. I and mean, it's gotten so bad where certain words we can't even use. You can't even say spiritual, biblical. All right. I'm not talking about spiritual as in a new age. All right. Now, I'm, I'm not with that at all. My fruit shows that my fruit shows that all right? I'm not down with that. But you got to be able to see the spiritual. I hate when New Age just takes over something and then we can't even we can't even use it anymore because then people think, oh, yo, she old. no, I ain't, ain't nothing. My fruit show who I serve. All right. But you got to start thinking with your spiritual eyes. So when that narc calls you, think about what what is this? What is the spirit behind this? What is the spirit behind the person that is talking, you know, and as Holy, and Holy Spirit will begin to show you. Oh, no, that's a that's a whole. You know what? Right there. That's a whole. He'll, he'll show you. OK, no, 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 no. That's a sheep. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope, that's a wolf. He'll begin to show you. But you got to spend time with him. All right. You got to spend that time with him so that you can discern that. All right. And I think enough has been said. Yes. And that the truth. Me, too. Right, right, right. Yes, indeed. Yes, the falling away. Yep. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. You said that is me. Amen. Uh, if it's only for one person, if it's only for one person, then then I've done what God has told me to be. And I pray that Father Abba is pleased. It's all about him. Amen. So if narcissist relationship is, is all you have your whole entire life, it's time for some examination. It's time for you to examine the fruit and discern the root. What is the root of that? Where did that start? How, how, how did you get to that place? Because the narcissist is just a manifestation of what's going on with you. Truth be told. All right. Because when we're healthy, um, when we're healthy, we set boundaries. It's not that you won't ever be impacted by one or, you know what I mean? But you you get into, if you see it, you're going to, you're going to run. You're going to heed the red flags. So it's something, it's something going on there, Mr. Sister Ruth. It's something going on that that's all that you had your entire life. And that's been, that was me. When I look back on it, I was like, wait a minute, I'm, this wasn't the only narcissist. This was just what I call the coup de grace narcissist that awakened me. All right. So I had to do a lot of soul searching and a lot of self-examination and a lot of healing, inner healing to get to the point where um, when I see the red, red flags, they're not, I don't turn them green. Because that's what we do when we're unhealed and we're unhealthy. So I had to get past the generational curses and, and do the, the inner soul. My soul was saved. I was born again. You got to be born again, right? You got to be born again. All right. If you want to endure into the end and you want to um, be led by the Holy Spirit, it's only by the power of the Holy Spirit. All right. That we're able to 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 walk this walk out. Otherwise, you're going to get weak. And, and not that we won't ever get weak, but you won't be able to endure um, without the power of the Holy Spirit. You won't be able to survive the Antichrist. And that's what this is all about. You, If you're falling for narcissists here, you'll fall for the Antichrist later. So Satan is sending narcissists. These are all, this is test. And if you don't pass the test, you won't graduate and you'll continue because that's what this life is a series of tests, right? So if you don't pass the test, you don't graduate. And so, Ruth, you haven't graduated. You haven't graduated. So you got you have to be recycled. Like in the military, we used to have training, right? And if you if you didn't pass, if you weren't first time goes, if you didn't pass that that leg of the training, you got recycled back 
with the next group or you got recycled back and you had to complete the training again. So if you're dating narcissists after narcissists, you're in a series of tests and you're you're I'm going to be honest, you're failing. You're failing those tests. And until you pass the test, until you sit down with Jehovah and you figure out what's going on, you're going to continue to date narcissists after narcissists. You're going to continue in the curse because you're in a curse. You're in a cyclic pattern. You're in a holding pattern. You're just in a holding pattern. And, and Satan's going to send you. He knows what works now. He knows what you like. He knows. And this is for anybody, not just Sister Ruth. This is for anybody, right? He's just, he's just going to send you narcissists after narcissists. Why? Because it works. And that narcissist is able to tie up your life and tie up years and, you, and tie up your purpose, focusing on them. So now you can't even focus on life and, and, and your goals and your purpose because now you're in a holding pattern over here with the narcissist. And, and that's the Satan's goal to tie you up for years and years and years with one of his foot soldiers, because that's what narcissists are. So you got to pass the test. Anytime something happened, I'm like, God, I, I got to pass this test. This is a test. When somebody comes out to, this is a test. You got to start looking, this is a test. And I, I'm determined that I'm going to pass this test this time. This time, when 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 the witch come, this time, when the trial come, this time I'm going to endure. I'm going to sit with my God for instructions and I'm going to wait on him and I'm not going to go before my angels. I'm not going to go before God gives me instructions. This time I'm going to pass. This time when Satan sends a narcissist, this time I know how to recognize the counterfeit. I know how to sit with God and ask him, who sent this person into my life? Did God send this person or did the enemy send them? And I know that my God is going to answer me because he doesn't want me led astray. He doesn't want you led astray. And if you heed his warnings and listen to what he has to say, he will not steer you wrong. He won't. All right. So anybody that comes into your life, ask them. God bless you, Vanessa. Ask anybody that comes into your life. God, did the enemy send them or did you send them? God, did you send me to this church or did you just feel good? Did you just hear the song and the and the piano and the organ and, and, the, and them playing? Did they appeal to your emotions? All right. Or is the word because you know the word and it's hidden in your heart? Did you know the word and the word resonated down in your spirit and in your marrow? And you know that this is a woman, this is a man from God. So this is why we have to know the word. You cannot depend on me. You cannot depend on your pastor. You cannot depend on, on anybody else. All right. Now we supplement and we, and we teach what God, you know, that's what the fivefold ministry does. We edify, right? But your primary source of knowledge and wisdom is the Ruach, is the Holy Spirit. God had to, God pulled me out of the four walls back then, right? He pulled me out of the four walls because I had, I was raised in the church. I know church. I know religion. I know that very well, but I didn't know my father very well. And so he had to teach me and he had to raise me up. I was raised up in a Jezebelic system. So he had to take me out of the world, take me out of my family, take me or my relatives, take me out of this Jezebelic system that I was a part of and raise me up as a little girl. So before anything, I'm a daughter. Before I'm just a servant. I'm, I'm just a servant. I'm just a daughter of the most high God. That's it. Y'all's daughter. I'm just y'all's daughter. That's it. All right. So he had to take me because I had never been loved right. Right. So he had to take me and show me how to be loved because I, I said, God, I don't know. I've never been loved right. Apparently I thought it was love, but it was really abuse. So God show me how to love, show me what love really looks like. And so he took me and he showed me what love really, he took me just like a little girl. And now I'm his daddy. I'm sorry, I'm his daughter. He's my daddy. My daddy, my daddy, your daughter is singing. I'll be singing and shouting and dancing for the rest of eternity. So he took me and he just walks with me. He talks with me. He shows me things. And so now I don't think of him as some just dictator and ruler. He's my ruler, but he's my daddy first. He said, when my mother and father forsake me, he took me in. 
He took me in. So now he he's everything. So I'm out of idolatry. So no longer do I look for man or woman first. I love my husband. I love my children, but I don't look to them. I look from the hills from which cometh my help. I look to my God first. That way I don't go down with the narcissist because I spent too many years. I spent too many years being controlled by Jezebel. And that was the enemy's plan. The enemy's plan is to turn you into a Jezebel or to turn you into an Ahab. And either way, it's outside of the will of God. So I had to submit again, like that song says, I had wrote it down earlier, take my heart and mold it, take my mind and transform it, take my will and conform it. So I had to be I had to be, he had to mold my heart. He had to transform my mind and he had to conform my will to his will. And that way I won't go down with the ship and I worship him and I get to walk in my calling and I get to, I get to teach, I get to preach, I get to edify, I get to glorify his name. I get to sit at his feet because if you don't want to sit at his feet now, why would you want to go to heaven? Why would you going to go to heaven? If you can't do those things here, this is our training ground. This is your training ground. This is all training. And how, and, and how you pass the test or don't pass the test, it depends on where you will spend eternity. It depends on how you, if you don't pass the test, you'll, you'll, you'll bow down to the Antichrist. If you don't pass the test with narcissists, you won't be fit for the kingdom. This is all about getting you ready for the kingdom. All right. This is all about getting us ready for the kingdom. That's right. Study to show thyself approved. All right, y'all. I think enough has been said. Enough has been said. Hey, Mel, you back back again. Thank you for coming over there. Thank you and, and the ladies for coming over to the um to the um book um theme. What am I saying? Now I'm losing my words. So I know it's time for me to go to sleep. I know it's time for me to go to sleep. Yes. Glory be to God. Yes. Your daughter is singing. I'll be singing and is it shouting and dancing Solomon, for the rest of Boy, eternity. La, 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 la. Hello, husband. I'm on live. Yeah, I'm about to get off. Okay, love you. I'll call you in a little bit. Bye -bye. <laughs> Your daughter is singing. I'll be singing and shouting and dancing for the rest of eternity. Yes, train, test, train, test, rise. That's it. Train, test, train, test, rise. <laughs> yes, hit the like button. I didn't know either, Mel. I didn't know either. Look, but when I got out of that room, Mel, I felt like I felt like um, God was telling me that. Um, that one of his 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 children, it was time for them to exit, and they weren't heeding his warnings. And so he was trying to tell them that the ship is going down. And that was in my spirit, tough. So I said, God, let me release this. I don't know who it's for, but I'll just do my part to tell your one of your children, one of your little hard-headed children, because I was hard-headed too, God. So I said, I'll just release this word and it'll be out of my spirit, and now I can go to sleep. Because it won't be bugging me. It won't be bugging me tonight. <laughs> so I've done my part, God. Are you pleased? That's how I be. I, when I get off of here, I'll be like, God, I just be talking to him. I'll be like, God, are you pleased? Is there anything that I should have said or I didn't say? Should I say it there? Did I do that? I, I, look, me and God have an AAR. We quarterback this thing. Do you hear me? We quarterback this thing. We quarterback this thing. I'll be like, God, what should I have said something? Is there anything? Are you pleased? Am I good? Are you good? And then he'll say, I'll be like, okay, God, okay, God, okay, okay. And then if I don't, I'll be like, God, okay, I repent. I repent, God. I just want to, I just want to bring him glory, y'all. I just want to bring him glory. I just want to be him glory. And I want his people to be set free. I want y'all to be set free. I want y'all to be set free because I know what it is to be bound. It's no, it's not living. I know what it is to be bound. All right, and I know what it is to be free, and I'm free. I've never been freer before, and I see the manifestation of his glory on my life, and I want everybody to experience this. I want everybody to experience this. Good night, TJ. Good night. I want to be in the will of God. 
Yes, Natalie, may God protect us while we're healing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Created her assignment to love, deliver so many. Thank you for your obedience, precious Shannon. Amen. God bless you too, Janet. Hey, Donella. I didn't know either. I didn't know either. I didn't know either. All right, love. Y'all want to pray out? Any questions before I um, pray? All right. All minds clear. Train and maintain bars. 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 Amen. To God be all the glory. My daddy, my daddy, your daughter. Let me see while I'm waiting on see if anybody got any question. I'll be singing and your baby is singing. Let me look at the lyrics before I butcher this song. And I, as much as I play this, I should know every word. Your daughter is singing. I'll be singing and dancing and shouting. For the rest of eternity, la 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 la. He who sits, your daddy, you're my dad, and your baby is singing. I'll be singing and dancing and shouting for the rest of eternity. Yes, la 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 la. Till the end, it's only you. Ha! He who sits in heaven laughs. Y'all, we get to laugh. We get to laugh. And if you don't have laughter, hold on, hold on. God is going to give you joy for mourning. He's going to give you beauty for ashes. You will rise again. You will rise again. Just hold on. We all go through that season. It's just like I saw Minda Mahogany said she's getting ready to start um, her log journey. I love logs. They're so beautiful, right? But when you're in that, when you cut it off, right, and then you go through that, that stage where it's it's not quite short and it's not quite long and it's it's like you know what I'm saying you got to be able to 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 go through the process and it's like that with anything right you got to be able to stand the not so good to get to the good but a lot of us don't understand there's no gain without pain either way it's going to be pain so you have to pick your pain you have to pick either the pain of healing or the pain of staying the same. To me, that pain of staying the same and being in the same place I was, look, five, six years ago, that to me is frightening. That to me is frightening. So that, 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 uh, look, I know we haven't been given the spirit of fear, but I don't want to be in the same place doing the same thing with the same people and unless they are of the king, in the kingdom, unless I'm doing kingdom work, all right? So God, look, 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 it's in you to overcome. It's in you to overcome. You don't want to be in the same, just stuck, stale, and stagnant. All right. And if you're there, look, you got the, look, look, see yourself through the process. Look, it gets, it gets real bad for a while. I ain't going to lie because you're leaving the kingdom of darkness. And when you leave the kingdom of darkness, they want you because you've been a, you've been a, a, a card carrying member of the kingdom of darkness, whether you knew about it or didn't. When you're in idolatry, you're in the kingdom of darkness. Sorry, oh, not you, not you. Okay, not you. But when you're in idolatry and you're with a narcissist, you're in the kingdom of darkness. That's why all them curses are coming up on your life. That's why all them tribulations are coming up on your life. Oh yeah. So you too. All right. So when you make a decision to come up out of that, the warfare comes against you. All right. The kingdom of, of darkness comes for you because they, they, they're not, they're not letting you go without a fight. And so people get weary because they don't know how to fight and they, and they, they don't, you know, um, they, they just don't know how to endure. We have not been taught how to endure. We, we're in a comfortable generation where everything is comfortable, where everybody want to be comfortable, where everybody want to play the back and we're all introverts and we don't want to do anything, you know, we don't want to ruffle any feathers. Well, I don't know if you know Jesus, but Jesus ruffled a lot of feathers. Uh, yo, you're going to rub people the wrong way. The truth is going to divide the room. Do you understand me? So you got to make up in your mind to that you are going to endure now. 
You don't wait until you get into a battle you know, and, and then decide, well, I'm going to no, make up in your, right, your mind right now that I'm going to endure, that I'm going to get my inheritance back, that I'm going to get my peace back, that I'm going to get my love back, that I'm going to get my joy back, that I'm going to get my inheritance back, that I'm going to get back everything that the enemy stole away from me. I am going to recoup and reclaim. My God is my retribution. He's going to vindicate me. God is going to redeem my name. I said even what three years ago when my name was being dragged through the mud by my own family. I said, I don't know what you're going to use this for, God, but I declare that you are going to vindicate my name that my name is going to be vindicated. And God made sure that my character, that my integrity, that everything lines up with his word. So then I just make sure that I'm in right standing and all I do is stand. And all I do every day is put one foot in front of the other and I give my best every day because everything I do, I do it from the heart and I do it as if God is watching because he is. And I want him at the end of all this to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You are crowned. I want him to say that you poured it all out, daughter. You didn't care who went against you. You didn't care. For my name's sake, you suffered. And here is your crown. Here is your crown of glory. You endured into the end. The enemy came against you, but you stood strong. And that's the same thing that I want God to say to you. I don't want narcissist abuse and what the narcissist is doing to stop you from fulfilling God calling on your life. As I said earlier today, none of us on judgment day is going to be able to, are going to be able to stand before God and say, well, because of this, I hid my talents in the ground. You're not going to be able to say, well, the narcissist is the reason why I didn't leave. The narcissist is the reason why I stay. The narcissist is the reason why when you told me to get up out of that burning bed, the narcissist put witchcraft on me. You're not going to be able to say that. So because God has given you, God has given you the tools. He's given you, he's showing you, he's telling you, he's sending his prophets. He's sending his evangelists. He's sending his preachers. He's sending people to tell you. And if you don't heed the warnings, you will not be able to say none of us on judgment day that the abuse is why the trauma is why because our God specializes in doing more with less. As I said the other day, he specializes. If you know God to be your God, you know that there is nothing that anybody can do that God can't recover you from. So the narcissist is going down, but don't you go down with them. Don't you go down with them. Don't get caught slipping. Don't get caught slipping because none of us know the time or the hour. And if you can't tell, Satan's workers are ramping it up. Bail, because this country has come into agreement with Bail, with Bathamon, with Bilal, the kingdom of darkness is ramping up. They know their time is short. So because our country has legalized uh, LGBT and Q and they're coming for your children, they're coming for our children, they're coming. So we have to be on guard. And if you're so worried about the narcissist, you won't be on post. Your job is to get on post. Your job is to recover. Your job is to use, is to figure out how to use what God gave you and multiply it. That's your job. Don't let wickedness make you cower for a season, just like with the short hair, for a season. And then it's going to grow out. Then it's going to get better. And then you're going to see the more you heal, the more things begin to shift in the atmosphere. Ah, because you are coming from under Jezebel, you are being awakened. And so now things are beginning to shift because you have coming in out of agreement with them. You're no longer in bed with them. And then you'll start to see, yeah, I don't want to see it, but I know the judgment. I pray that they repent. I pray that those who come against me repent and I'm doing God's work. Now I repent when I get it wrong. I pray that they repent because I don't want to see the judgment of God. I don't want God's judgment. Not like that because I know God don't play about me. God don't play about you. And if you knew that, you would understand and you wouldn't harden your heart against the most high. 
God doesn't play about you, but he doesn't, look, look, get out of that sin so he can protect you. Get out of that sin. Get out of that sin so he can protect you. All right. Um, let me see. He said, how do we push through the witchcraft heaviness when fighting for our children as we escape? Oh, I mean, I don't want to say, I mean, I say this all the time. I mean, you, you have to fight for the word. You got to, whoo, you got to live, breathe, and eat this word fast, 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 fast. All right. And I don't mean, and, and some of y'all be trying to go on a 40 day fast. I'm not, I'm like, God will direct your fast, fast, watch and pray, pray. You go into warfare against this and then just make sure, like I said, make sure those legal rights, you, you examine your life, you sit down with God, you examine your life and you make sure that there's no legal rights, no legal access. All right. And then you declare the word of God over your life. You tell them, which is that, look, once you've done your part and you look, you, once you've done your part and you know that there's no, like, there's no, um, you've repented, you've renounced it. You've renounced the sin. You've renounced the curses. And this is why it's so important to sit with God so he can show you these things. You can't just speed this up. All right. And then you, you know, you show God if it is indeed, um, witchcraft, everything is not witchcraft. Everything is not a curse. Okay. Um, but I know when I feel like something is coming against me, you know, I I, I pray, I fast, um, fasting, fasting. I'm telling you, fasting. A lot of people don't fast and they're believers and they don't fast. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure um, why. All right. But God will send you because he'll give you things even in that fast. He'll 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 show me things and it'll come. It'll be something. He'll just tell me something or somebody will call me or some. He's so strategic. And he'll show me what to come against. He'll show, he'll just give me a signal. He'll just put something in my spirit to pray against, to, to come against, to, to how to win this. He's very strategic, just like he told Gideon to march around, march around the walls, all right, to the walls come tumbling down. He'll tell you something and it may sound crazy. It may sound crazy, but if he's telling you to do it, do it. All right. But then just press, keep pressing, keep pressing. And this is why, this is also why you need prayer partners. You need people who will come battle against you. When the, the ladies in CBU, when they, when they tell me that there's an issue and it's not me, it's not me, but there's power in agreement. So when they tell me, okay, I'm getting ready to go into warfare against, you know, I'm like, okay, tag, let's pray. Let's come together. Let's fast. All right. Do you understand what a, the prayer, the fervent effectual prayers, the fervent, what is it? Fervent effectual prayers of the righteous availeth much. When you have a righteous person praying for you in agreement with you. See, a lot of people be trying to fight this stuff on their own. No, the fervent effectual, I think I'm saying that right. The fervent effectual prayers of the righteous availeth much. So I look, tag. Look, when I'm going something, hey, hey, I'm going through this. Look, look, I need I need a prayer partner. Come and fast and pray with me. All right. I need you to look. I, this is what I'm praying for. I need you to stand with me on this. It's like and then it's like you coming together in the realm of the spirit. So then we're all praying and fasting on one accord. Do you know what that does to the kingdom of darkness? But a lot of times people try to be long rangers in the realm of the spirit. And if, if you're you can some things you can do. But look, I'm like, no, pray for me. If something is really heavy, come, look, let's pray against this. Oh, no, no, no. This is why I stopped. The, this is why I'll stop and pray the first, because I know I'm righteous. I, not in my sight, but according, look, I don't play with sin. Do you understand me? So when you get somebody that that is righteous, that comes together, whether it's you, and it may, you need, you may need a higher, the, their spiritual ranking. Let's, let's, let's be clear. There is a such thing as spiritual ranking. All right. So some things might be out of the, I know people, oh, I just need Jesus. I'm look, okay. Uh, look, look, there, there's ranking to this thing too. Do you understand me? So I, I need to connect with somebody and God will send me somebody that know, know more than me. We don't know it all. That knows more than me in this area. Oh, and they'll be like, oh yeah, I see this before. Okay, let's come. And they, that thing, look, look. Okay. So there's, there's, God will send you people. He will he fast and pray and you and you go to war and you go to work. All right. And you continue to cover your children, continue to cover them and you have them to renounce the curses as well. Your children need deliverance. OK, your children need deliverance. All right. 
And I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes Yes, the ladies in CBU pray for my son and he and I can both attest to it that it helps. Thank you for being a witness, Mel. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for saying that. So as she prayed, we, we came together and it's just it's like you ever seen like um like Charlie's Angels. It's like you like y'all standing back to back. We're standing back to back to back in the realm of the spirit. And you like people underestimate that. So God said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be there too. And a lot of people try to try to do this because they shameful, they hide and they doing this, man. You better get you somebody that can cover you in the realm of the spirit. This is why people be sleeping on. Look, 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 stop sleeping on stuff. Stop sleeping on stuff. You don't, you never know where your breakthrough is. Do you understand me? You never know where your breakthrough is. Amen. It makes sense. Thank you so much. I'm praying and Yah is revealing. Amen. Amen. Because if you ask me to pray for you, I take prayer seriously. First of all, I love praying. <laughs> First of all, I love praying. You know what I mean? But if somebody asks me to pray, I take that seriously because I understand, you know, now I have to be, I have to be everybody and everybody who they say. So you have to be careful about, about but if I know you and, I, and your spirit has been tested, and you ask me to pray for you, I take that seriously. And I'm not saying it like, oh, Shannon's prayer is the only one. No, 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 I ain't saying that. All right. But I do know the, the fervent effectual prayers of the righteous avail as much. All right. And we all need prayer. We all need prayer warriors to fight alongside of us. This is where the narcissist understands this, understands what we don't. A narcissist is very strategic. They build up their flying monkeys. They build up their teams. We don't build up flying monkeys and we don't build up teams to smear want to smear people's names and, and spread evilness. But we need teams. We have God. We're powerful along with the dunamis power of God, but we're more powerful together. And this is why Satan tries to pick us off and isolate us and run us into caves. So that way you, you, you don't join this. You don't join that because you're worried about, well, how I'm going to look, well, who all going to be there and all, all this other stuff. And you're missing, you're missing your prayer warriors. You're missing the connection. You're missing it. Now, if you have it, it, it can come in the four walls, outside of the four walls. It comes in many ways. The point is, get it, get it, get it. Come out of the sin so Jesus can come in. Enough has been said. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all for rocking with me. Enough has been said. The kingdom of darkness is desperate, but God is in control. Amen. Yes. God help me endure. God help me endure. All right. Let's go to God in prayer. Amen. Amen. That's amazing. Yes, indeed. Yes. Yes, and I pray that God shows you and God sends you prayer warriors. Now be discerning, okay? Because anytime you ask for something, ask God for it. And then look, Satan's gonna try to send you a counterfeit a lot of times, and then you just be discerning. If some don't seem right, get out. <laughs> look, if some does some look, look, be discerning, but we always also have to understand that sometimes it's our wounds. So we we examine if our wounds, but if some don't feel right, some don't seem right, some in the buttermilk ain't clean. Look, look, hey. Mm -mm. don't go for it. Okay. That's right. We are more powerful together. Hello, Queen D. It's good to see you. Amen. All right. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for this time. I thank you for being here in the middle of this conversation, Lord. We pray for whoever it is, Lord, that it's, a, that it's time for their exodus, Lord, before the judgment of the Lord comes upon them, Heavenly Father, before the judgment comes down on Jezebel, Lord, that they run from Jezebel, that they run into the ark, Heavenly Father, that they make covenant with you, Lord, because you are a covenant-keeping God. And when we're in covenant with God, he is our provider. He is our shelter from the storm. He is everything that we need, Heavenly Father. So Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for being everything that you are, Lord. We thank you for being our provider. We thank you for being Jehovah Jireh. We thank you for being Jehovah Nisi. We thank you for being our banner, Lord. We thank you for Jesus Christ of Nazareth dying on the cross for our sins, because it's only because of the blood, Heavenly Father, that we are able to be set free, Lord. The veil has been lifted. So Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. 
Lord. We pray that you quicken the spirit, Heavenly Father, and they move according, not according to me, Lord, but according to your timeline, Lord, because you work out of the, the, the realm, Lord. You're, you are a God that does not work in chronos time, Heavenly Father. So everything that you do is syncopated, is synchronized, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. And even your exit is synchronized. God is organizing things. It, well, actually, he's already organizing and he's waiting on your faith to match up with what he says. He's waiting on your faith. Hallelujah. He's waiting on your faith to line up so that he can deliver you from the hands of the enemy. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you will be set free, that you will come out of this. And the Lord, hallelujah. We pray that the Lord be with you. Lord, be with them as they as they travel. Be with them as they come out of these situations. Be with them, Lord, as they fight against the warfare, Heavenly Father. We ask that your angels, Lord, be released on their behalf in the name of Jesus, Lord. We pray over our children, Lord, that you cover them, Lord, that you remove any generational curses, Lord. We repent for all of our sins, Lord, those made by commission, for those in agreement, Lord. We turn away from sin, Lord, and we uh, we seek your face in your hand. We seek your will, Heavenly Father. We ask that you transform our minds and mold our minds, mold our hearts, Heavenly Father, as the psalmist said, Lord. My, mold our hearts, Heavenly Father. Transform our minds, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We ask that you go in, Lord, with the blood of Jesus, Lord, and transform our minds, every demonic thought, Lord, every subconscious thought, Lord, every ungodly thought, Lord, we come out of agreement with who the enemy says that we are. And we believe you at your word, Lord, when you say that we are precious, Heavenly Father, when you say that we are beautifully and wonderfully made, Heavenly Father, hallelujah, Lord, we are precious in your sight, Lord, so we come into agreement with thus says the Lord about our, our future, about our life, about who we are, Heavenly Father, and we seek you, Lord, to transform our minds, transform our hearts, Heavenly Father, Lord, make us over, make us over in your image, Lord. Hallelujah. We are made in God's image. We are made in his perfect image. Hallelujah. So consecrate us, Lord. Set us aside, Lord, for your glory. Let us be vessels uh, made for your will, made to do your work, Heavenly Father. We worship you and we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for everything that you are doing in our lives, Lord. And we pray that more captives are being Remember Psalms 35 when they're smearing your name. Remember the psalm. Remember the word. Hide it in your heart. Listen to the word. Hallelujah. And declare the word of God over your situation. Hallelujah. That's how you get the victory. And then when you've done all that you can do, just stand. Just stand. Hallelujah. And ask God to come in. Ask God to come in. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we submit our will to your will, Lord. We come out of agreement with Jezebel, Lord. We come out of agreement with ungodly soul ties, Lord, and we call we call our minds back to us. We call our spirit back to you, Heavenly Father, not even to us, Lord. We call it back to you, Lord, and we ask that you guard our hearts, guard our minds, guard our spirit, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we ask for justice, Lord. You are a God that loves justice, Lord. And even what the narcissist has done will not go unpunished, Heavenly Father. Lord, even what we do has not gone unpunished, Lord. So we want to be on the right standing, Lord. When the ship goes down, down, Lord, we want to make sure when the water, when the when the when the fire comes, Lord, we want to make sure that we're in the cleft of your rock, that we're in the ark of the covenant, Heavenly Father, that we're in agreement with you. God wants to make sure that we're in agreement and that we're on the right side. Hallelujah. That we're not lukewarm, but we're on fire for God. May the fire of God protect you. May the fire of God go before you. May the fire of God protect you from witchcraft. May the fire of God protect you from divination in the name of Jesus. May the fire of 
God protect you from generational curses. May the fire of God, may you allow the fire of God to consecrate you. May you allow the fire of God to prune you and make you over and make you new and transform your mind. Hallelujah. 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 So Lord, we thank you, Lord. And we pray for your protection, Lord. Lord, you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of sound mind, Heavenly Father. We know that leaving is a dangerous time. So Lord, we ask that your angels cover them, that you cover them. And even for those who have left, Lord, may they be unpenetrable. May the, the hoover, Heavenly Father, fall flat in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When the hoover comes, may it fall flat, Heavenly Father. May there be no access. Access denied, demons. Access denied. Hallelujah. When the devil, when the demons try to come back, they got to find that your house is swept clean, that your house is filled with the Holy Spirit, that your holy, that your house is filled with the word of God. Hallelujah. That's how you're going to stand. That's how you're going to stand and wage war against the witchcraft. That's how it's going to, that's how you're going to stand. That's how you're going to prevail. Hallelujah. Through the blood of Jesus, through the word of God, through the Ruach Kodesh. That's how you're going to stand. I know it sounds so simplistic, but that's how you stand and that's how you win wars. That's how you win victories in the name of God. Hallelujah. You declare God's word over your situation. You continue to stand. The devil's job is to make you weary and to wear you down. I declare that the Lord, that the strength of the Lord be the uh, strength of God be your strength. Hallelujah. That the strength of God be your strength. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Lord, strengthen them up, gird them up. Heavenly Father, when you are weak, God is strong. God is always strong. Hallelujah. So the devil's job is to wear you down. The demon's job is to wear you down. It's to make you feel guilty. Hallelujah. And, 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 con and, and condemnation. God says there is no condemnation. That's how you win. You put the word of God on those demons. You put the word of God on those witches. You put the word of God on your situation. You put the word of God on the sickness. God says he is Jehovah Jireh. He is Jehovah Rapha. So that cancer has to leave your body. That diabetes has to leave your body. Now that means also that you watch your eating habits. That means that you do what you can in the natural and then in the spiritual realm you find fight that thing. Hallelujah. So we declare that diabetes is not your portion. Hallelujah. Good health is your portion. A healthy sound mind is your portion. That's the word of God as a, as a kingdom citizen. You are to take dominion. Hallelujah. Lord, we ask them for an indwelling of your Holy Spirit. That's why they're going to endure to the end. Lord, we ask that you be the paraclete, that you be their comforter, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. That's how you're going to win wars. That's how you're going to win the battle. That's how how you're going to win. Hallelujah. You're going to win when you put the word of God on those demons. When you put the word of God and you apply the word to your situation, you're going to take your vitamins every day. Every day you apply the word. Every day you read the word. And then you're going to apply the blood. You're going to take your vitamin B and you're going to apply the blood to your situation. You're going to see what thus says the Lord about your situation. And then you're going to take your vitamin C. You're going to take off that carnality and you're going to put on the mind of Christ. You're going to put on the the mind of Yeshua. What would Jesus do in your situation? You're going to you're gonna take off the world's way of thinking. You're no longer a citizen of this world. You're a, you're a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. You've transferred your citizenship. Today, your citizenship has been transferred. Today, you have your passport from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of heaven. Today, your passport is stamped. Hallelujah. Today, hallelujah, restoration is your portion. Hallelujah. And then you're going to take your vitamin D. You're going to ask God for wisdom and discernment. Hallelujah. So that you can be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. Hallelujah. You're going to be wise because we've been sent out as sheep amongst wolves. So you need to be able to discern this is a wolf and this is a sheep. You're going to take your vitamin D, put on your discernment. And then you're going to take your vitamin E. Hallelujah. You're going to edify your spirit every day. Hallelujah. Every day, every day, you're going to embody the spirit, the word of God every day. That's your portion. And then you take your vitamin F. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. And then your vitamin E is that you hear, that you have an ear to hear the word of God in and out of season. And then you take your vitamin F. You put on the fullness of God every day. You put on your armor. When you get up in the morning, you say, God, hallelujah. 
hallelujah. I put on the armor of God. I put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith, the belt of truth, and my feet are shod with the gospel of peace. No matter what happens today, I know that God is in control. God is in control of my day. I seize my morning. I seize my day. And God seizes the night. Hallelujah. He is a God that sees all. God never sleeps. A thousand may fall on your left, 10,000 on your right, but it shall not become near your dwelling. You, you plead the blood of Jesus over your dwelling. You plead the blood of Jesus over your children. And then you make sure that you are in right standing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those demons can't stand against your armor. You don't give them any access. Access is denied. Access is denied. Hallelujah. Because now you're transported into the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. So glory, glory. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that God lifted me. I'm so glad that God set me free. Set your people free, Lord. Set your people free. Let my people go. Let my people go. God says, let my people go. It's Exodus time. It's Exodus season. Hallelujah. So Lord, we thank you, Lord. We ask as we go to sleep, Lord, that we still put on our armor, Heavenly Father, that the angels and the heavenly rams, Lord, fight our battles, Heavenly Father. And Lord, that you give us wisdom over our dream life, Lord. Reveal to us, Lord, reveal to us through dreams, through visions, Heavenly Father, through hearing, through feelings, Heavenly Father. Help us put on our, our senses, Heavenly Father. All, use all of our five senses as seers, Heavenly Father, to be able to discern what thus says the Lord, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the warnings, Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father. And we pray angelic dreams, Lord. We bind up any works of the, uh, the kingdom of darkness as we prepare to sleep, Heavenly Father. Any spirit spouses, we command you to come out and now uh, your legal right has now been broken. You now have no legal access and no legal right. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Lord. And Satan, the Lord rebukes you. Satan, the Lord rebukes you, Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord rebukes you. So, Lord, we just pray, Lord, Lord, over their minds, over their spirits, over their homes, over their cars, Heavenly Father, over their children, over all of us, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And we pray that your will be done in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 God is a good God. God is a good God. That's right. Armor up. The narcissist is getting is about to go down. Don't get caught on their ship. It's time to jump ship. You got to jump ship like the Titanic. You don't want to be on that ship. Do you understand me? You don't want to be on that ship. Freedom. Freedom. God is good. He, I, he must increase. I must decrease. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Make us a new creation. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. It can form, but it will not prosper. Glory to God, our deliverer. We receive wholeness, healing, freedom, peace, righteousness, joy, wisdom, blessings. That's our portion. The fruit of the spirit is your portion. Hallelujah. May the joy of the Lord be our strength. Yes, the name of the Lord is a strong tower that the righteous can run to and be safe. Yes, is the only savior. The only. That's right. Kick them out, Mel. No vacancies for evil squatters. No squatters in this temple. Yes, but you, you can't give them legal access. Hallelujah. God is our refuge and strength and a very present. Look at all this. Look at all this word coming in here. Hide these scriptures in your heart so that you may not sin against thee, that you can stand against. You have to have the word of God and believe it. Believe it. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe that God is a deliverer? Do you believe? God bless you, Violet. God bless you. May God return that to you over and above measure. Hallelujah. All right, y'all. I will see y'all. Uh, me and my husband have a download. Don't forget to um, sign up for Rock Your Crown, okay? Uh, sign up for Rock Your Crown. It's June 1st. June 1st is Narciss World Narcissist Abuse Awareness Day. All right, so we'll just come in there and rock our crowns. You don't have to wear a crown. You can come in and we're just sharing and uh, breaking the chains of narcissist abuse. All right, so if you enjoy this conversation, you'll enjoy um, rock your crown. And then, ladies, don't forget that this Thursday is CBU. If you want to join, come on in there. All right, um, it's just it's more of this. It's just it's 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 awesome.
It's amazing. All right. So um, those are two. Uh, you can go to my website, www.narcfreeliving.com. You can sign up there. If you have any questions, you can always email me either at support at narcfreeliving or Shannon. Um, dot savoy at narcfreeliving.com all right all right uh let me see and then we're gonna get out of here god bless you yes yes did you see that witch putting that well they said she was seeing she was seeing to the spirits like what the meat i don't want no cursed food pray over your food pray like nowadays we got to pray over everything these people like they they own one they own one they own one they own one Pray over everything. Amen. Holy, holy, holy. Yes. Yes. The, yes. Yes. Indeed. Don't make me start singing. Yes. Rock your crown. Amen. Deborah. No problem. Amen. All right, y'all. I will see y'all later. Keep those, Thank y'all for joining me. Keep those notifications on and making you have peaceful sleep and rest. Give it all to God. Give it, do your best and let God do the rest. Let's continue to break those chains. All right. See you later. Bye-bye. Good night. Shalom. Uh-huh.